Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. This is the June meeting of the Community Board to Health Environment and Social Services Committee meeting. My name is Brandon Smith. I am the chair of the committee and I'd like to welcome you to tonight's meeting. Um, there are a few ground rules that we have to cover uh, before we get started. And I'm going to go through those items right now for you. So please pay attention and, and know that we do have a few rules that we like to, that we, that we enforce for, with respect to these meetings, keeping in mind it is a community driven uh, meeting. Um, so with that said, uh, please let it be known that recording has begun. This meeting is being recorded for public access and archiving in accordance with the New York State Open Meetings Law. It is the practice of Community Board 2 to conduct remote meetings with all committee members' cameras on. Public attendees are also encouraged to leave their cameras on, particularly if you are given the floor to speak. All attendees, please keep your microphone muted when you are not speaking. To maintain an appropriate discussion and voting process, I will make it known when and which topics are open for comment by committee members, board members at large, and the general public. If you have questions that fall outside of public comment time, please type your questions in the chat panel and we will address them as time permits. You may also email the district office at any time outside of these meetings. Very important. We're committed to providing access to all of our neighbors, regardless of physical ability or limitation. Uh, if you require accommodation or assistance for full participation, please contact the district office 72 hours before any public meeting. But more important, we, we ask that everybody who's speaking, whether you're a presenter or a person who just came here from the public to please use plain language speak in a moderate tone and frequently ask if you're speaking loud enough. Uh, if you're presenting something, read the title of the slides and describe any of the images on the slides, such as photos, graphs, and charts. I just wanna to add to that a little bit that I really want to emphasize that um, it's expected that everybody should be kind to each other at this meeting. Uh, we're in a meeting that can often discuss some heated topics and it's important that everybody uh, respect the, the rules of the meeting, which is basically Robert's rules, where if you're in the, in the public, if to direct your comments to me, the chair, um, and same thing goes for anybody who's an applicant presenting uh, a license, but at the same time to try to be respectful of each other, because that's the kind of environment that we're gonna try to foster in this uh, community board. Um, with that said, I want to get the uh, introduction started. So uh, Jessica, do you want to go first? Sure. Thanks, Brandon. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Thurston. I'm the secretary of the committee as well as of the full uh, community board. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, Carol Ann, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Carol Ann Church, Assistant District Manager. Thank you. Um, Barry, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Barry Newmark, and I'm a public member of the committee. Thank you, Barry. Nicole, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nicole McKnight. I am a community board member. Thank you very much. And I believe we have a board member in attendance as well. Um, Otrell, did you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Latrell Marcel, and I'm a community board member. Uh, awesome. It's great to see you. Um, this is our first meeting in the Zoom environment, so I think everybody's kind of getting used to it, and, and um, so everybody knows we need to have uh, five folks here from the committee, and right now we got four in order for us to have quorum. So we won't be able to um, 
pass a, a motion on anything until we get that fifth person here. But at the same time, um, we can kick off our meeting and, and uh, we can uh, get uh, Barry's update and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get some of our other members here pretty soon. Um, Barry, are, are you ready to give your update? Yes, I am, Brandon. That's great. Thank you. So we're really honored to have Barry Newmark as a, as a member of our committee um, provide an update on a monthly basis about the COVID-19 pandemic as it affects our district. Um, we feel like this is such an important issue and it has been that it's a standing agenda item on our, on our agenda and we greatly appreciate Mr. Newmark's efforts to look into this and to brief us on, on what's going on out there, even though we probably are aware of some of the things that are going on, maybe, maybe we're not aware of everything. Thank you very much, Barry. Do you want to take it away? Yes, thanks, Brandon. And uh, Jessica, I can send you the spreadsheet I'm speaking from. Um, so that this way you can have it for the minutes. Um, so what we've been doing is looking at um, our five predominant uh, neighborhoods in uh, our community district. Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, downtown Brooklyn is one. Fort Greene, Bed-Stuy, parts of Clinton Hill is another. Borham Hill, part of Park Slope is the third. Williamsburg in that area is a fourth. And Clinton Hill and a little bit of Prospect Heights is a fifth. So first thing uh, we looked at in the past seven days is testing. And um, Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, um, and Boring Hill Park Slope had a higher rate of testing on the past week uh, per 100,000 people than the New York City median, whereas uh, Fort Greene, uh, Boreham Hill, I'm sorry, uh, Fort Greene, Williamsburg, and Clinton Hill had lower uh, testing rate. In terms of uh, testing positive, um, Four of the neighborhoods all tested um, below the Brooklyn and New York City rate, which is at about 0.5%, except for Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo and downtown Brooklyn, which tested positive at a 0.71% rate. Um, new cases, uh, in New York City, the median new cases in the past seven days was eight, and um, for any area, any neighborhood. And um, Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, and downtown Brooklyn had 14 cases. Fort Greene had four. Borham Hill had three. Williamsburg had eight. And Clinton Hill had seven. Um, the percentage of the population, 18 plus, that have been uh, positive with COVID is um, low for Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, downtown Brooklyn, despite the recent numbers. Um, and Borham Hill and Clinton Hill, it's the highest in our area for Williamsburg at 8.3% and followed by Fort Greene at 6.6%. Um, an interesting number, which I haven't looked at before is the deaths per 100,000, if you wanna call that interesting. Um, and on the, uh, in the material that comes from the city, the deaths per 100,000 for uh, four of our neighborhoods is too low to even show up as a number. Um, the only one that showed up as a number is Clinton Hill Prospect Heights, and that was like 0.01%, which is still very, very low. Uh, so those are those are all that's all good news. Um, in terms of vaccinations, the um, percentage of the population over 18 with fully vaccinated uh, two shots, or I guess the um, um, Johnson & Johnson one-shot deal um, went up in all our neighborhoods uh, this month from where it was last month, which is very good. Um, the lowest rates um, are in our neighborhood continue to be um, Williamsburg at 41% uh, fully vaccinated and uh, Fort Greene at 35% fully vaccinated. By contrast, um, Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, and downtown Brooklyn is 64% fully vaccinated. Clinton Hill Prospect Heights is at 60% fully vaccinated. Um, Borham Hill is at 54% fully vaccinated. Um, and my last set of numbers that I'm gonna throw at you is the hospitalization rates per 100,000. Uh, the numbers are too low for um, Brooklyn Heights, Borham, I mean, uh, Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, and um, 
downtown Brooklyn to even be listed. And they're too low for uh, Borum Hill and parts of Park Slope. Um, the uh, rate is um, ranges from 13.8% per 100,000 all the way up to 20.5% among the other three neighborhoods. What that translates into people, however, is uh, Clinton Hill had 11 people per 100,000 hospitalized. Um, Williamsburg had 14 people per 100,000 and um, Fort Greene had seven people per 100,000. Um, the daily average for New York City for the past 28 days was 49. So the numbers are not bad, um, but um, as we knew and anticipated, we have a range of uh, numbers in our district. Um, so uh, what's the upshot? I guess the upshot is that the numbers are moving in a positive direction uh, within our community district. Um, two areas, Williamsburg and um, Fort Greene continue to lag behind the other sections of our district in terms of people getting vaccinated, um, which is unfortunate, but that's why I think we need to make a um, big push and figure out how to try to uh, get those numbers up. And uh, Brandon, thank you for allowing me to present that. Thank you, Barry. Before I open it up for questions about this, and I, I really encourage everybody to, to think about this um, as well, um, because it's uh, con we've been continuing to see these numbers every month, and, and we, we have similar players in the in the, the lower vaccination areas, as well as uh, in the in the testing areas as well too. But when you say Fort Greene, Barry, are you really, are you referring to um, a specific part of Fort Greene or a zip code within Fort Greene? Because when I've looked at like the citywide data that is broken down by zip, it seems like 11205 is like particularly hard hit and, but that doesn't encompass all of Fort Greene. And it makes me wonder like what, what you're saying when you say Fort Greene, are you talking about the whole thing or just part of it? Um, I'm talking about the 11205 as they have it show up in the city figures. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where the other part of Fort Greene would fall into in terms of the other communities. Yeah, I think that that's a, I think it's an important thing to, to, to think about. Um, at least when I was looking at the, and I haven't looked at it in the last few days, but um, at least as I looked at it, 11205 was doing significantly lower in terms of vaccination than even some other parts that appeared to be within Fort Greene. And noticing that that sort of corresponded to the particular parts of Fort Greene where the public housing developments were located, it, it sort of clarified the, the, the point a bit uh, since we've been hearing for several meetings about the impact that exists there. And I think you said, what it was 35% is still the, is the vaccination rate there? Um, if it was 35, if, if it wasn't 35, it was like 35, 36, 37. Yeah, so it was 35% for fully okay. vaccinated. Brandon. Okay. And Jessica, I just sent you the spreadsheet. Um, can I, can I ask a question? Of part course, Latrell. Um, part of Farragut is, is a housing development, Farragut Development, and they're in 11201. So it's like Fort Greene and it's Farragut. I know sometimes people group them together, mm -hmm. but it's Fort Greene is 11205 and Farragut is 11201. That's good to point right. out. And, you know, I know that, that that's a... Um, um, we want to be concerned about Farragut as well as the other housing developments. And perhaps it's an, it's an interesting question to think about what are we really seeing when we see the, the numbers for 11201. If it's broken down by zip code and that in, includes Farragut, you know, perhaps that it's not really showing the appropriate impact. And how can we better define the impact, I think, is another way to think about things, too, because even within a zip code, you can have 
different kinds of experiences and from a health perspective, different uh, levels of health. Um, okay, well, in either anyone from the committee or the board, uh, does anybody have any further um, questions or thoughts on, uh, on Barry's COVID-19 presentation, where we are, what we might do, what might be a concern? Just a quick one, Brandon. Sure. Barry, you mentioned the testing rate and that it's in that, you know, we saw more cases than I guess last month in Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo downtown Brooklyn. And it doesn't seem like there's enough, you know, we're not dealing with the enough cases to necessarily do the math on this, but it seems problematic to me, but you know, maybe, maybe it's, uh, statistically insignificant, but I, I can't help wondering if it's people getting really comfortable without the masks. I don't know, but that's just the hypochondriac in me probably being nervous. So, you know, I, I know you can't answer that, but I, 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 it's something I'm interested for us to keep an eye on is, you know, potentially increased rates in some neighborhoods. Yeah, I mean, you know, if that if that would continue as a trend, it would be interesting. But unfortunately, the numbers that are available to me are only via zip code. And right. so that includes Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, downtown Brooklyn. And I guess with downtown Brooklyn, um, you know, I don't know if their thinking is that Farragut is included in that or not. Um, I'd assume so. I mean, yeah, because to Latrell's point, it's 11201. Yeah, I know, I know, I know it's included in the 11201. It's, yeah. you know, it would be nice if they named them and didn't just name Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, and downtown Brooklyn. Right. That's another story. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with that. And um, we, we, we have both a hand as well as an additional board member, not a committee member, but a board member who's joined. Um, I think we may have a committee member too, but I want to honor Miss Einhorn who has raised her hand. Ms. Einhorn, do you want to introduce yourself and also feel free to ask your question? Sure. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I am a board member on the Economic Development Committee. Um, and I actually have been speaking with Carol Ann because I'm interested in attending these meetings a little bit more. Um, I actually worked in the Vaccine Command Center for quite a long period of time as part of the COVID response. And, and prior to that, I stood up a couple of the COVID operations that you might be familiar with around the city. And so I was a little too busy to attend this year, <laughs> um, but but now that things have have started to um, have started to show, I, I don't like using some of the language that's out there right now. Like the pandemic is ending, but now that things have started to slow down a little bit for us, um, I think this is a great committee that I I'd like the support um, moving forward. Um, and so I I am curious though. Um, if you guys are aware of any of the mobile vaccination initiatives that might be happening in Fort Greene specifically, um, and as I personally haven't heard a lot about them. You know, we just had a discussion last month about some different initiatives that were going on in Fort Greene, and I can't remember um, the degree to which they, they were mobile in nature. Um, does either Carol Ann or Taya have information about any anything that's pot, that's coming up in the next in the near future in Fort Greene in terms of like mobile vaccination sites? I know we we spoke last time about stuff going on at Church of the Open Door and and there was uh, um, and, and there were definitely a few other things. The borough president's office was involved and in, uh, Miss Blackshear was speaking about it. Um, let's see. Uh, looks like Taya mentions there's been two in Fort Greene so far, um, but it's definitely something to keep on the on the on the horizon. Could I ask you a question, Lindsay? If you're if you're familiar with the the operations of these these types of sites, because it's something I never really got the answer to. How do they work it out? Where where do you go to get your second shot when you get the the vaccine at a mobile center? Because are you're going to come back to the same mobile place in in two weeks? No, actually, now that we've resumed using Johnson and Johnson, you are receiving the Johnson and Johnson. Oh, so it's only so it, Johnson and Johnson in the mobile. Okay, it That's is. Okay. But there's a lot of success with them because it's a targeted 
approach where when there's a public event in a community that doesn't have a high vaccination rate, they're often partnering with the vaccine command center to make sure um, to get a mobile unit to those locations. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank thank you for sharing that. And um, uh, it looks like the board office is sharing some email, some resources about this, but we'll we'll try to keep an eye out for further information about it. And and thanks for sharing your comment on that subject. Um, no any other questions on Barry's COVID nineteen presentation? Hi, Brandon. This is Alejandro. Can you hear me? I can. I was just about to give you a proper introduction, but it's great to see you, and, and I'm sure everyone's excited to see you because now we have quorum. <laughs> well, my apologies for not uh, for being late, and also when I get home, I'll transition to a laptop, which will make this much easier. But um, I wanted. Oh, my name is Alejandro Varela, and I'm a public member of Hess. Um, I wanted to just uh, maybe piggyback or add to Latrell's comments, which I suspect was in response to Barry's report, which I missed. Um, and it's, it's yes, that uh, I, I don't know which geographic unit of measure would be most adequate for us and, and, and even here in the city, but in a gentrifying neighborhood, way too much data gets lost within a zip code because as we know, we can have very wealthy and we can have extreme poverty within one zip code. And so we need to move down to the level of, I believe census tract would be more specific, but I wonder if this tabulation data that Carol Ann just mentioned in the chat I don't know how, how fine of a grain that is, but we really need to be pushing for more specific geographic data. And I, my understanding that is of what we're doing now, the census tract data gets the most specific. Um, it's how we know that in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, we have the second poorest census tract in New York City, but no one would talk about Fort Greene, Brooklyn as having that degree of extreme poverty, although we know it's there. And so um, anyway, those are just my two cents. I, I know I'm just adding to the chorus. Yeah, no, it's much appreciated. And we were briefly discussing that before you joined too, Alejandro. Thanks for mentioning it um, and great to have you. We've also been joined by our, our, our newest committee member, Emily Anadu, who we're very excited to have. And Emily, do you want to introduce yourself just so that folks know who you are and welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Emily Nadu. Um, I have been loitering on these calls for about a year now, so very happy to be joining as a public member. Um, I unfortunately had to miss the first 30 minutes of the conversation, but Alejandro definitely um, was talking about one of my favorite subjects, just the idea that, yes, as we um, think about our work, we have to recognize that there are very different tales of cities, tales of two and three and four cities within each um, zip code, but I am a 15 year resident of the Fort Greene community. So just very excited about um, working on this committee. Thanks, Emily, and great to have you. Um, and we'll, we'll look forward to working more with you on these things in the future. Um, we can now move ahead to some of the more uh, agenda related topics uh, of our meeting now that we have a quorum. So I'm gonna start back at the beginning with an approval of tonight's agenda. Can I get a motion to approve tonight's agenda as amended by the fact that we had to do Barry's COVID-19 presentation before we, we got a quorum? Uh, motion from Barry, second from Jessica. Uh, discussion on, or, or let, let's just have a vote on whether that, that works out. Um, Barry, how do you vote? Approved. Uh, Jessica? Approved. Um, Ms. McKnight? Approved. Uh, Ms. Anadu? I, I got a... Sorry, approved. I got a... Okay, great. And uh, Mr. Barella? He approves and I approve too. So we've got a... We're good on the agenda for the night. Um, next, we get to go into our liquor license review. Um, and I imagine several folks are here for this. So we'll try to get through it as we, we got on the agenda. The first item up for the evening is 673 Atlantic Avenue, Chef Simpson. And for that location, I'll ask the same question. I will for everybody else. Um, who's presenting the application on, on the Zoom? 
Do hi, my have name is Hello. Oh, hi, Frank. Do oh, you yeah. have the application to present? Yeah, I believe Chef Simpson should be on too. There he is. Yes, I am. Hi, Frank. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes. Should I start? Um, it, if you can, you can, you can start in a second, just as long as you get some method to put up the application on the, the screen so that we can see it. Does somebody have that? I think the board office may be. Do I need to share? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. I can give you a little background if you like while Caroline. Yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. This uh, application came before you guys, I believe. Chef, do you remember what it was? Uh, if I remember the date, the date was it? The fall? Oh, yes. It was, yeah, sometime in November. We came before you guys. You were very gracious and approved it, and we thank you. We opened the premises about two months ago, Chef. Yes, we opened for indoor dining when the governor gave the go ahead. And we were doing indoor dining and recently um, got the liquor license approved and granted. And we're here tonight basically to just increase the hours of operation. Okay, so what we, uh, it looks like from what I'm, I'm looking at on the application, we've got the proposal is to close indoors at 2 a.m. Is there outdoor seating? I think that's a, a good first question. No, there no, no, there no. No, outdoor, no seat. outdoor seating. Okay, and you're closing at 2 a.m. What what time are you closing right now on the indoors? Um, presently, by the governor order, we close at 12. Um, we close at 12 until they extend it. Yeah, but I think our previous time was also, wasn't it? Um, 12. Forget about the governor's order. I think it was 12 previously. Yes, was 12 previously. Yeah. And one and one on the weekends. Friday and Saturday was one. Yes. During the week was 12. Okay. Um, so, what, what kind of place is this? Is this a, um, can you just give sort of a rundown of the, the kind of scene that you've got there? Is it like a. Yes. Um, previously was the um, Atlantic Social, um, now the Simpson Restaurant and Bar. We're full restaurant and dining. We also have a private room for private dining. Um, we have a, a, a bar in the middle of, of the left side of the dining room. Um, it's a family oriented um, kind of restaurant where you come, there's um, the, the, the menu, soul food, Caribbean American cuisine. Thank you. Um, most of the music that we play is house music. Um, very rarely, unless it's a special occasion like Mother's Day or Father's Day, we will have a, a DJ that comes in, but music is not played where it disturbs anyone. It's just for in-house purpose. So it's a full-fledged restaurant, four-course menu. You order appetizer, entree, um, dessert. Um, and then we also have a bar where people sit at the bar and have a drink and great conversation. Okay. Are you still doing private parties at this location or, or is that not, not going on? No, we don't do, because of the fact we have the private room, every now and then you'll have like a birthday get together, but not actually a club scene where anyone is collecting at the door or anything like that to come in. It's more, it's mostly like an in-house um, party in the sense of if, because of the fact we do catering as well. Okay. And have you had any issues with security since you've opened? Um, I imagine you may not have had so many people in there because of the COVID, but um, but I, I and maybe I'll table that question. It just sort of struck my non my my non COVID mind. Um, no, no, we haven't had any issue with security because I do have security on site, just for customer safety and for you to feel secure when you come in. I have security that comes in at say six, and they will stay there until close just to make sure everything is good and. They walk around the room and so forth, just to pan, pan the room just to make sure everything is good. But we don't have no issues um, since we've been open. And I'm really appreciative of that. OK. I found the minutes from back in November when you came the last time. And it looks like you were approved to close at midnight on Monday through Thursday. 
uh, 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday and 10 p.m. on Sunday. Does that sound right to you? Um, yes, that sounds like it. Okay. And now you're proposing to close at 2 a.m. every night, seven days a week. Yes. One of the reasons for that, and I found out because of the fact of new restaurant within that area is also affiliated with the Barclays. A lot of the time, the games, when the games finish and so forth, you will get a run over and the people, they leave the Barclays probably like 12 o'clock, one o'clock or so. Sometimes they want to come by, um, have a drink. So I think two o'clock would be a good time. Because even though so be the case, by one o'clock, you still have to taper it off to be able to close at two. So at one o'clock, you may eventually stop, um, stop serving liquor so everyone can get ready to leave. Have you had any issues with the neighbors above and across the street since uh, you've opened? Like anybody uh, made any complaints to you or anybody expressed concerns to you about your, your noise or operations? No, I have not, no complaint, um, no issues, because I try to be very respectable of the community and the neighbor up, um, that's above. So I haven't had no issue or any complaint with them. Okay. Um, questions from members of the committee? I'm not seeing any questions. Um, any board members or members of the public have a question for this application, 673 Atlantic? I have a question, sorry. Um, and Chef, sorry, can I speak? Of course, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Sorry, still the rules. Um, <laughs> so um, Chef Wenford, you, you kind of hinted to this, but just wanted to get clarity. So would you, at, at, if you closed at 2 a.m., would you have an official last call time or you're just suggesting? Yes. Last, yeah, last call would be anywhere 1 o'clock, 1.15 last call um, because at 2 o'clock we we'll, we'll go for a hard close at 2. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for 673 Atlantic? I'm not hearing any. Uh, does anybody want to raise a motion for 673 Atlantic? Uh, Jessica, what's your motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Um, okay. I, I, I'll give you the second, Barry. Nicole had her hand up at just about the same time, but I, I, I heard you, I think, a moment before I saw Nicole. Um, discussion on the motion. Okay. Um, Jessica, how do you vote? I vote yes. Okay. Uh, Nicole, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Emily, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Uh, Barry, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. And Alejandro, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Okay. I vote in favor as well. We don't have any other committee members here. Uh, so it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, appreciate you coming and good luck. Um, I, saw we had a, I saw we had another board member join us. Ms. Quint, did you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Brandon. Uh, were you speaking to me? <laughs> yes, I just wanted to see. Typically, when we have other board members come to our committee, I'll give you a second to introduce yourself and 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 explain who you are, your status. Okay. Your yeah. No. Great. I'm, I'm board member. I'm uh, multitasking, cooking dinner. Uh, but I'm Suzanne Quint. I'm on the board, and I sit on the Parks Committee, uh, and joining uh, for a bit of time tonight. Wonderful. Thank you. It's great to have you, and appreciate you coming. Um, Great. Let's move along to the next item on our agenda tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. All right. Next up, we've got 810 Fulton Street, The Hungry Ghost. Do we have somebody here for that application? 810 Fulton, The Hungry Ghost. I feel like I've seen this one before. I 
was going to say, I swear we've gotten this application before. Like but... more than once. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> going once, going twice. We can come back if, if there's nobody for this. But uh, the, the, again, the one more time, this is 810 Fulton Street, The Hungry Ghost. All right, I'm going to move ahead on the agenda to the next item. 37 Cranberry Avenue, <laughs> Inga's Bar. We yes. have somebody here for 37 Cranberry. Yes, hi, this is Kevin Kim representing Sean and Karen Callahan who are also on. Uh, 37 Cranberry is Cranberry Street is a uh, new restaurant replacing what was originally there, Jack the Horse. And um, it'll be a full OP license open from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Okay, uh, that's that's great, but could could are you gonna be presenting the application or do we need to get the board office to do that? Looks like here it I comes, think great, great, yeah, cool. You can keep going, comes. sorry to interrupt you. Okay, no problem. So I'll introduce uh, Sean and Karen to just give you a brief description of the vision that they have for this new place. Sean? Hi everyone. Uh, Thanks to the committee for having us. I'm Sean Rimble. This is my wife, Karen Callahan, also my business partner. Hi. Um, we're thrilled to be uh, your neighbors and a part of the, the community. Uh, yeah, so we're looking to open up a kind of a neighborhood clubhouse that is uh, also kind of destination worthy in terms of the food. I've been cooking in Brooklyn and a chef of many restaurants in Brooklyn, specifically in Williamsburg for a lot of years. And we've been looking at restaurant spaces for the past three years in Carroll Gardens, uh, Cobble Hill, Brooklyn Heights, and really focused our energy on Brooklyn Heights just recently, because we do feel it's a, a little bit underserved and we're just looking forward to kind of having fun and having a space that's open to everyone. Ideally, we'll have uh, our regulars coming in three times a week for different experiences, whether it's maybe a snack uh, after school pickup or coming in with family and friends for a more lengthy dinner on say a Tuesday night or a weekend evening. Uh, we'll do full brunch obviously. And uh, yeah, that's about it actually. We're just looking to uh, kind of accommodate everyone and be there for the neighborhood. Great, thank you very much. Um, I think it would probably be helpful if you could describe the outdoor area uh, it seems like there, I see there's an item on the application that is going to be uh, open until 11 p.m. Um, outdoors. Is that a, a sidewalk situation, a backyard situation? And what is the proximity to any residences for this establishment? For sure. Um, you know, we're, we're actually, the sidewalks in, in this location are, are fairly thin, uh, not very wide, and not uh, most of them not 12 feet to the from the curb to the building. Uh, we're focusing on the open streets program, the open and having some, some street seating, if anything. Uh, we do have residential on either side of the restaurant as well as above us. Uh, and we have been in touch with our upstairs neighbors just recently who uh, actually worked with the last owners to soundproof from the rest of uh, the ceiling. But in terms of the outdoor seating, yeah, we're looking to do uh, street kiosk seating. Okay, and do you have any plans beyond that or is this just sort of for as long as we have the open streets in place, that's what you plan to do? It would be that for sure. And then if, if those were to kind of come and go, then we would need to focus perhaps on a, a cafe permit for the sidewalk. But we're really, we're, we're going to be sustainable with or without outdoor dining. We would just like to take advantage of it. The, that location is so beautiful. The, the streets and the architecture are amazing. So we'd like for our guests uh, to be able to enjoy that both inside and out when and if possible. Okay, um, that that makes sense. And I think here's here's what I would I guess want to know, kind of uh, as a follow up to that. I mean, how 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 comprehensively do you feel like you've spoken with neighbors in the surrounding areas? And typically, we in the past before COVID, we asked for signatures of support from people because. Um, 
it was a lot more doable than in a COVID environment. But in circumstances like this, we want to try to understand how many people have been spoken to and, and how aware of the surrounding community is. And have there been any objections raised from people in the community about the, the uh, proposal to have this, this established? Oops. Chair, um, I just want to point out that a letter was submitted from the Brooklyn Heights Association signed by Lara Bernback, the executive director, showing full support for this concept. And we also have a board member of BHA, Cindy McLaughlin, who's joined us here today. And she's also submitted in writing an email letter of support. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. And we, we certainly will note that as well as everyone else who supports it. I think what I was really hoping to understand is whether there'd been anyone who expressed any concern about the location. And um, if, if that point can be clarified, that would be, that would be great. Uh, I, I will say that, you know, we've been over there, you know, kind of cleaning out and, and getting the space ready uh, for the work that we're going to do, which is not a whole lot. And I've been leaving the door open to kind of welcome people in to come in and, and, and get to know our neighbors. And if anything, uh, they're like, how soon can you get this thing going? They, they actually, the, the last space that was there, the Jack the Horse Tavern was a beloved neighborhood fixture for 15 years, had a full liquor license. Uh, I think the community really misses that. And it, to be honest with you, at least in my opinion, the neighborhood is lacking that kind of go-to space, whether you want to get dressed up or whether you're coming from your construction job and just want to sit down and, and, and hang out, it's, it's truly lacking. So if anything, people are coming in and giving high fives and they're just like, we're so happy to have you here. Thank you for taking a risk on Brooklyn Heights. And we're convinced that we made the right choice here and, and can't, we, we feel like all ships are going to rise together and that if we take care of the community, they'll care, take care of us. And so, yeah, we want to work together with everyone. So no objections as of, as of yet, for sure. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, questions from members of the committee? Any members of the committee have a question? Uh, Brandon, I have a, a question and a comment. Go ahead. I, uh, I'm sorry, I missed your name, Sean and Karen? No. Yes, correct, nice to meet you. Hi. Um, I see on your application, you have a relationship to Diner and Marlowe and Sons, is that correct? Also to Romans or is that a separate? I was the chef of Diner and Marlowe and Sons for several years, and uh, Roman's was uh, a sister restaurant of ours. In fact, my former co-chef, Dave, was the opening chef of Roman's. All great, loca all great locations, and I'm, I'm sure um, if this is anything like those, the Brooklyn Heights is, is very lucky to have you, and at Thanks. some point we'll all be there. Um, and then my general comment that I want to make, and, and I want to stress that this has no bearing on your application, it's just a sort of a general suggestion. If you uh, li were listening into the earlier part of the conversation, we're talking about the sort of pockets of poor health in the community, pockets of poverty, those are not surprisingly related to pockets of unemployment. And so we have an unemployment problem in the district that we don't often talk about. Um, and we would like to, we're hoping that um, all of these, I see that you have 15 to 20 potential employees. And our hope is that you will hire those locally, that they will come from brown and black communities where that unemployment is highest. Um, and that they will be front of house and that there will be opportunities for them to sort of grow in, in their jobs. And again, no bearing on your application, just a sort of a friendly suggestion. Um, first of all, thank you for bringing that up. I actually wanted to speak a little bit about that, but wanted it to come up naturally, not us talking about our own business. Uh, I actually just spent some time over the past few years working with a nonprofit organization called Drive Change, where we worked with formerly incarcerated youth. And I was the uh, culinary director of that program. Uh, and I'm looking to, and we are looking to employ them in both front and back of the house, in addition to anyone that wants to be involved, but uh, there will be some focus on kind of giving back to the community and social justice uh, as a part of our business model, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other members of the committee with questions about this application? Mr. So, Chair, before um, you can, proceed can to you, a vote. Can I just add? Can two you hold points? off for one second, Mr. Sure. Chairman? Sorry, because sure. we have a process. And if you can just give me a few moments, I also have to see if the com community have any concerns as well. Um, now, I with the committee questions uh, asked, um, I actually have one more question, but I'm going to hold it and uh, ask if any board members, and I see we have a board member who has a question, and or members of the public have any uh, questions. So 
uh, ask Ms. Einhorn first to raise her question, and then I'll see if the community has any questions, and then I will ask my question. Thanks, Brandon. Um, so I just wanted to actually share another resource. Um, we, as a community board, work very closely with the Brooklyn Navy Yard, and they have um, a career center where they're matching individuals who live within the community with jobs. And since you're hiring for so many positions, they can be a great resource for you. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. We wrote it down and took note and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Ms. Einhorn. And, and to the applicants and really to all applicants, we've traditionally um, mentioned the, the Brooklyn Navy Yard, as well as the uh, Ingersoll Community Center and Fort Greene Snap as, as good locations to find uh, different uh, aspects of help. Um, now, any other members of the community have any questions? I see one question, just want to scroll over and see how many we've got. Um, Ms. McLaughlin, did you want to ask your question? Welcome to the committee. Yeah, thank you. Um, I actually don't have a question. I'm really here in support of these two. Um, I'm Ms. McLaughlin, I'm a member of the board of the BHA and I chair the public realm committee. And so one of our primary efforts has been to revitalize the neighborhood um, especially it's uh, mom and pop restaurants and retail. Okay. I'll put my um, and so as part of that process, we surveyed the community to ask them what they wanted to see on Montague Street and in the uh, retail establishments around it. And overwhelmingly, they wanted to see restaurants just like this one. And so, you know, on behalf of the BHA, and I think on behalf of the community at large, um, we are vehemently in support of this restaurant, of this liquor license, um, and I'm really happy and proud to be here. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And were there any other members of the public had, who had questions for this application? Cranberry Street. I'm not seeing any. Um, I, I will ask my follow-up question, but I want to note that we received a few letters of support um, on this, not just from Brooklyn Heights Association, who we, we value their input, but, but also from, uh, looks like, three different members of the community who are, are really supportive of, of this establishment. Um, I did just want to ask you, I saw you checked off on your application that you'd be hosting private events. And I was wondering if you could just give us a taste as to what that would, would be, would be like, uh, because it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a term that can be applied largely across the board. We don't really know what it means, but it is generally our biggest issue as a committee is, is finding, uh, is, is private parties because sometimes they're not always, uh, um, regulated the way that w is, is beneficial to the community. But take it away and, and explain um, your, your thoughts on how this will look. Uh, that, that's completely understandable for sure. And I appreciate the question. Uh, you know, we have a, a, a beautiful configuration with this location that will allow us to kind of, uh, I don't want to say section off, but we'll be able to use different spaces for different purposes, not the least of which could be, you know, a partial closeout. Of a part of the space that would allow us to accommodate a party, a larger party, which is not easy in just any other restaurant, whether it's eight people, 12 people, 14 or 16 people. Uh, I've, I have, you know, background in hotel restaurants as well. And I think that it's something that my kitchen staffs are, you know, very capable of delivering a, a very high quality product when it comes to a larger size party. Uh, it will not be our main focus. And it's certainly, uh, will be executed only with the same uh, regards as we would do our normal service, which would be our, our neighbors come first. And so uh, when, when it comes to, you know, I don't wanna say uh, some sort of, let's just use the cliche of like the bachelor party gone wild, uh, that's just not gonna be, you know, allowed. Our business, our families, our community comes before anyone else, even if, if it means the bottom line. So, Yes, we would like to have the opportunity to accommodate some larger parties, but uh, we are also not a catering hall, and nor are we a nightclub on any level. Okay, but uh, will, will someone from your, uh, from your establishment or team be present during these, these events? Thank you for asking, 1,000%. Okay. Sure. Uh -huh. And 
do you have any idea about how many people would be coming in for 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 one of these events or or, or what kind of parties it, it would be Sure, it's more of an extent of a larger dinner service. So if a party of 10 or 12 people want to have dinner, we would consider that a private party. It wouldn't be a, you know, huge celebration. It's more of a, of a private dinner space that we have available that would function out of the same kitchen, function with the same front of house staff serving them, that sort of thing. It's not a part, you know, party space in the traditional sense. Okay. And then, and no matter what the, whether it's the private parties or you guys running your establishment at other times, it's going to remain background music only at all times. You're not going to have like DJs or, or things like that coming in, even from a private establishment. Right. It's a very small space. Okay. So as an option. Any other questions from either the community committee or the community for this application on Cranberry Street? Uh, Mr. Harrison, I, I see you've joined us. Did you want to introduce yourself and feel free to ask a question if you'd like? Sure, John Harrison, member of the committee. Thank you, um, Ms. Smith. Um, if this was covered, I apologize, uh, but I did not hear to your question, the applicant state anything regarding soundproofing. Is this space um, going to be mitigated so that you add some kind of either physical device or um, circumstantial arrangement to, um, to, to mitigate sound. Yes, in, in fact, we were in touch with the last owner operators of the restaurant, as well as our upstore, uh, upstairs neighbors, excuse me. And they actually worked together, uh, I wanna say about five years ago, but no longer than 10 years ago. And they actually did soundproof uh, the ceiling between our business and the residents up above. So it has been soundproofed. Okay, but so in answer to my question, the answer, I guess, the simple answer would be no, you are not going to do any additional soundproofing. We, we would certainly be open to doing that if, you know, if in any situation rose that it were necessary, we're completely open-minded to that and have a budget set aside in the event we need to, yes. And I know that you covered this, but I missed it. How many people does it seat approximately? How many people does it, what's the capacity? Oh, sorry. 65 to 70. We plan on uh, no more than 74 people in the space. So we'll seat up to 64 with a staff, uh, you know, less than 10. So 74 or fewer people in occupancy. And, and what time you close? Uh, we're planning on closing by 11 each evening. Okay. Uh, we may end up closing earlier some nights. We just kind of put that uh, as a max. Okay. Th thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for this application? I'm not seeing any. Um, uh, Mr. Andrews, you've joined our meeting. Did you want to introduce yourself? Uh, we may have to come back to Mr. Andrews. He's muted. Um, is there a motion for this application? Yes, Mr. Chair. So I move to approve. Chair okay. Smith, but can I can I make my comment before you vote because it does impact your vote? Um, just give me one second. Do we have a second on Mr. Harrison's motion? A second. Oh. Yep. Second, Miss Anna. Hey, how you doing? Nice. Thank, thank you. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Kim, I'm sorry that I, I didn't allow you to speak earlier. It's, please go ahead and make your comment. Yes, no, I just want to point out um, before you vote that there are just two minor edits to the questionnaire that we uh, caught. So one is number 16, how many establishments with OP is there within 500 foot radius? There happens to be Henry's End Restaurant, which is exactly 500 foot away. And so we have put here zero, but we will change it and resubmit, amend it and resubmit to one, but it still doesn't implicate the 500 foot law rule. Um, so that was one factor. And the second factor was just a floor plan diagram that we sent you. Uh, currently it shows 74 seats inside, but we are amending that to 64 to account for the maximum occupancy of 74. So we wanted to put that out there before you voted on the application. Okay, well, thanks for sharing that. I, I think it's, help, it, it, it's helpful and appreciate the, 
um, additional detail that you've given. Um, any uh, discussion on the motion? Just one, one uh, comment, Brandon, it's Alejandro. The, uh, irrespective of the, open, the city's open streets programs, which may or may not end, or we don't know when they will end. I'm, I'm thinking more of a, you know, um, down the road, if there were an open streets program and a sidewalk cafe or a street cafe just in front of a residential space, we would say 11 on the weekends, 10 during the week. So I wanna point that out. I don't know, since we haven't been talking about that with respect to open streets, because does that exist, you know, it's a different rule altogether, but if it's gonna be in the application, shouldn't it reflect that 10 and 11 times time frame? I think right now it says 11 across the board. Yeah, that's, that, that's what the application says right now. Um, I, for, do the do applicants feel like uh, Sunday to Thursday that they could uh, handle closing the outside at 10? 100%, we, we would be happy to accommodate. Okay, um, Mr. Harrison, are you on board with that being a friendly amendment to your motion? Uh, sure, Mr. Smith, and I would just like to reiterate that, uh, of course I came in late, but it's my observation and my experience and my questions that this, this applicant, if they're not the poster child for being an applicant to our committee, they come near close because they seem very willing to work not only with the community, but be honest in their application and work with us in our demands to make it a more palatable situation for all parties involved. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, Ms. Anandu, do you, do you uh, agree with that as well, you, since you seconded the motion? Yes. Okay. Um, great. So any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, um, Ms. Anadu, how do you vote? Approved, or yes. Either is fine. Uh, Mr. Harrison? Yes, sir. Mr. Varela? In favor. Uh, In favor. I think that was Victor. Um, yes. Oh, great. Thank you, Victor. Great to have you. Ms. Thurston? In favor. Okay, Mr. Newmark. In favor. And Ms. McKnight. Yes. Okay. And did I get you, Mr. Varela? I, I did good. Okay, and I vote yep. in favor too. Great. Thank you all very much. Um, good luck. Unanimous. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, next up on the agenda for the evening, we've got. 86 South Portland Avenue Dinner Party Restaurant, LLC. We have 86 Portland. Eighty-six Portland. Oh well, if you buy the bag, you pack it for you. I Going once, going twice. Um, All right, we're going to move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, 275 Park Avenue. Do we have somebody here from this application? How you doing? Uh, Kwame Clark here. And my, my partner is also on, Ray Dijon. He's still on mute. OK, I'm here. Great. Um, who will be presenting the application? <laughs> Are you guys able to do it, or do we, should we get the have the board office present? Uh, I believe I could do it. Um, hang on one second here. I'll have to share it. Just give me a second. Okay. Huh, where'd my downloads go? Sorry, I seem to have lost my tab. I, I can share it. And I can't I can offer you privileges right now, so just hold oh, on.
Clark, do you see the share screen option in green at the bottom middle of your screen? I do. Okay, go ahead and click that and make sure that your application is open. There we go, looks great. Okay. You can go ahead. Right here? Okay, sure. So hi, my name is Kwame Clark and my partner is Ray Dijon. And uh, we have, uh, we're opening a live performance venue, a comedy and jazz club uh, on the corner of Park in Washington, 275 Park. Uh, we're also calling it 275 Park as well. Um, so we're looking to do uh, live music, jazz shows, jazz brunches, comedy shows, um, with a full kitchen and full bar uh, to complement the shows. So uh, let, let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ray Dijon. I'm, I grew up in Park Slope, Brooklyn. I now live in Clinton Hill Co-ops on uh, Waverly between Green and Lafayette. And um, <clears throat> I've been in the entertainment business about 30 years. Uh, and I've been operating my own comedy club out of a restaurant in East New York, Brooklyn called Lindenwood Restaurant. I've been there for 15 years, uh, consistently three days a week. Um, I also have a relationship with the King's Theater in Brooklyn. I do shows there uh, at least four times a year. I've done shows at the Barclay. I've done shows at Madison Square Garden. My relationship with stand-up comedians goes all the way from Bill Burr to Kevin Hart to all of these acts that I, um, I've i been actually dealing with uh, over these years. I've worked at Caroline's, I promoted uh, Caroline's on Broadway, Gotham's Comedy Club, and I always go in there on my own and I bring these wonderful events. And then during the pandemic, my partner and I, who I've worked with, who ran a theater called uh, Your College Performing Arts Center in Queens, I've done a couple of shows with him and so we decided that with his expert expertise in sound and video and visual and my expertise in stand-up comedy and also working with musicians and, uh, and artists that we would come together and create this, this venue in Brooklyn. So as long as I've been doing stand-up and working with music events, there has not been an official reputable state-of-the-art comedy club soundstage in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and I've, I've lived here my entire life. And so working with all of these other venues, I wanted to bring something to Brooklyn, New York um, that is of quality and of, of a high standard that we can have in the community in, in Clinton Hill. Um, and so we, we have uh, people behind us that, you know, uh, are backing us on the project and, you know, at this point it's coming to life. So we've already established uh, getting the, the location and I think it's a perfect location. And Kwame could talk more about some of the things that we know that are required that we really need to do um, in order to serve the community better and in order to make sure that um, it's, it's, it's not a problem thing. Like for instance, Kwame, I think you really need to go into the soundproofing and the, the quality of soundproofing and what we've already kind of connected with and established uh, through some vendors. Yeah, certainly. So um, my, my background, I'm the executive director of the Performing Arts Center um, at, at your college. And uh, I also own a production company that uh, does live sound, um, lighting, staging, and work with several uh, soundproofing companies. We've done the uh, Weeksville so Heritage Center in Brooklyn, which is not too far from here. Um, the Jamaica Performing Arts Center, uh, taking care of all of, the, all of those venues over the years. And um, with, on this project, uh, we've enlisted uh, Morgan Acoustics, who is uh, uh, an acoustical engineering company that uh, soundproofs venues. Um, just like this one in the spaces that are in communities um, to be able to have synergy with the community and not be uh, a, a, a obnoxious neighbor 
so um, we've enlisted them. We, I think we've submit, we submitted that document as well of, of the, the plan that they plan to do for us. And I work with them several times in several projects before. And they've always been 100% uh, together with, it, with everything that they've um, proposed for us. Okay. Um, there are residents in this building, right? Yes. And what, what attempts have been made to contact the residents and, and, and solicit any feedback on this? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, Robert Dunn, who is the, the property manager, he has all of our, um, our press decks and he has sent that to all the residents and they're, they're excited about what we're doing because um, we're, we're not just doing only um, uh, events in the evening. In, in the evening, we're, mm -hmm. we're doing um, uh, lunch service throughout the day. We're doing... Um, a coffee shop in the, in, the, in the morning time prior to you know residents going to work they're all very excited about what, what we plan to do there and bring to that to that space um, particularly since we're um, we're taking the extra steps with the soundproofing and 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 that type of thing it's not to not be an issue okay also right now the building is still under construction so everything above us, no one's living above us right now, only on the other side. It's a huge building. So in the process of them doing construction upstairs in conjunction with us, we're making sure that that plan addresses the apartments that are above us and then also the soundproofing below. Okay. And just before I open it up to questions from the committee, um, we had a different application from a different applicant back in January at this same address. Uh, it was a gym spa called Body by Brooklyn, which um, had a number of uh, 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 complaints about it involving a fire, a flood, and some um, concerns about the existence of a smoke alarm inside the building. Um, and I, I'm just wondering, where does this space, space sit relative to that um, uh, to that yeah. spa, and and what's, what's going on room? with that situation, to your knowledge, if if you know, well, it's on the same building, but it's um, further down the block. So in between where that is and where we are, there's a courtyard in between us. Um, so I'm I'm not certain what's going on with them, with them in terms of a, a, a flood or anything like that. Um, but I, I do know that there's a spa further down the block on, on Park. Okay, but you, you're completely unaffiliated with that business. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, diff completely different. Great, okay. I just wanted to clarify that point because it, it, makes, it, it gives us better perspective on things. Uh, um, I, I do also wanna note, I, I guess I'll, I'll put this over, over to the committee, but I, I, we received about seven or eight letters from different folks who lived in the building who were expressing opposition to the, to the issuance of the license. Um, several of the letters seem to have had the same language, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, copied in them, uh, but they seem to generally follow the premise that, um, there was concern about the, I wanna just, sorry, we have a lot of documents for tonight's meeting. I wanna make sure I get the, this, this correct. Um, this line, uh, allowing a performance venue to operate within with a full liquor license in a residential building will seriously disrupt the quality of life for the tenants of the building and threaten the public in the community. Um, so, there definitely were about seven or uh, eight uh, different um, comments that were, were sent to us that indicated that. Um, I, I wanted to give you just a general opportunity to respond to that, to that comment, but also um, could you quantify a little bit more of the residents that you've spoken with in terms of like how, how many residents have you heard from and to what degree do you feel like the um, what the information you've received, which sounds mostly positive, is yeah. reflective of a general consensus of the people who live there. So the, the feedback that we got uh, was from the, the property manager who we sent all of our documents and our, our press packets to, and he sent that out to the residents. So the, the feedback that we've been getting from him has been positive. So um, this is the first that I'm hearing of um, anyone being opposed to it at all. 
Okay. Um, I think from here, I'll open it to the committee for questions. Does anyone on the committee have any questions for the applicant? Any questions from the committee? Um, Emily, you can go. I feel like you're hesitating. Oh, no, because I, I saw a hand raised and I didn't, I wasn't sure. Um, sorry, Barry, go ahead, go first. No, go ahead, Emily, if you. No, 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 please go ahead, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> um, so I, I would I would um, appreciate it, Mr. Clark, if, if you could respond to the tenor of the um, concerns that Mr. Smith um, outlined before from yeah. some of the residents. What, how would you respond to those people if you had an opportunity to speak with them? Absolutely. So um, in terms of, of sound and, and noise, mm -hmm. um, that's something that from day one was a concern to us, knowing that there were, um, there were uh, residents above us. And, but it's not something that I haven't dealt with before. You know, I've worked with um, soundproofing companies, particularly Morgan Acoustics, who we're using on this project in, in several venues throughout the city, um, some, some in Brooklyn as well. And you know, I feel very confident that we'll be able to um, achieve a decibel level below anything that they will be able to hear above us. I, I, I want to add to that. I, I mean, I would also be open to um, maybe having uh, some sort of open meeting with, with the residents as well. So they can ask us questions directly and so we can answer them uh, if if that's a possibility. Or, you know, another way, uh, I don't know if there's any way of us being able to address each individual letter, um, but I would be open to um, talking to the, the, Absolutely. the, the residents. Okay. Well, and we will have a second in a moment because I think there's there's definitely some community members who want to ask questions this evening. Um, but I just want to make sure first, um, any other members of the committee have a Mr. question Chair? that they want to raise? Mr. Chair? Mr. Andrews, go ahead. Um, uh, being that you, you guys are going to be a full service unit, um, have you guys thought about accessible bathrooms and all that sort of jazz and actually accessibility to the building itself? I'm sorry, you, you're breaking up a little bit there. Um, have you guys thought about accessibility, uh, a wheelchair rep coming in? Oh, yeah. And also oh, yeah. Your, rest, your restrooms as well? Oh, yeah. We, we, um, we, in, our, in our plan, which we submitted, we have two uh, wheelchair accessible um, uh, bathrooms. And we're on the ground level. So um, the, it'll completely have any um, access for, for that on both sides of, of the venue. You both have uh, entrances that, that can accommodate wheelchair if need be, correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the hours are until 2 a.m. Is it seven days a week at 2 a.m. you're proposing to go? Yes. Okay. And there's no outdoor seating? No. No, we haven't applied for that. All right. Any other members of the committee have questions for the applicant? I do, Brandon, it's Alejandro. Sure, go ahead. Hi, um, just curious, I know you explained it that there are no residents directly above you in, I'm familiar with that space because it used to be Fresh Fanatic, I think, right? The market yeah. years back? Yeah, okay. more. Right, and so directly above you're saying there, there's no, there are no residents in the immediate unit floor. I'm, I'm having trouble envisioning where in that building the club would be. It would, it would take over the entire space that Fresh Fanatic once was. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so what, what I was saying, I'm sorry for cutting you off, is that there's no residence there as of now. They're, they're, it's still in the construction phase. They did a, a total renovation of that entire side of the building. So that building is two sides. So on the other side, they have the spa. And then above the spa, there's apartments. But above the venue right now, it's still under renovation. So we have been working with the construction people in the building along with our architect and the soundproofing company to make sure that the soundproofing needs are accommodated. So eventually there will be residents above.
we were able to catch it at a time where that construction is still in progress. So we so in that we don't have to, re, you know, undo it to to get it um, to where we need to be. We're, we're catching it right in the moment when it's being built and everything is taking um, taking place. Also, thank you for that. Also, I just want to ask real quick, more, or more of a comment. The nature of that area, which I think, um, I think it emboldens people, people who go to bars and clubs, the, the few that have been coming up over the years or that have frankly have led to some noise issues. I think it emboldens people because it's near the BQE. It feels less residential, right? It has a feeling that it's still sort of a manufacturing and industrial area and the Navy are being so close. So I think it does lead to folks hanging out, congregating outside, um, and sort of bringing the noise outside of the space into the street. And I wonder if you have any thoughts on that, any plans or, or how, you, how you would handle that. Okay, so let, let me respond to that. First of all, <clears throat> the, my, targeting, my target market is 35 to 65. Um, it's all sit down events. There is no party, it's not people, I'll give you an example. If I bring in a Bill Burr for a comedy show, Bill Burr will come in and do one show Thursday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, one show Sunday. So after the crowd, after the show is over, they leave. There's no hanging out outside. There's no, it's a bar and everybody's hanging out and there's a DJ. It's specifically to an event. Everything is going to be scheduled six months in advance. Events. There's no hanging out, I'm just coming over here to get a drink. That's not the kind of establishment that we want. I wanted the Carolines on Broadway type feel. I want to feel where you come in for a show and after it's over, you go home. Um, not the hangout kind of thing. So that's that's the whole idea of it. Whether it's a jazz band and you and you catch the first show, and you know, afterwards, just like at, at a Blue Note, you know, the show is over, they, they, the, the crowd leaves, they bring in a second crowd. So we have an area inside the venue that's separated from the showroom that's going to hold the second audience. So they won't have to be outside. Right, they no lines to... outside. Yeah. Everyone's inside. And then when once one group goes out, the other group comes in. So um, that that is very, very important to me. And I'm very cognizant of that. I, we don't like the lingering. I just don't want that type of crowd where you have you know, people just going outside drinking and it's it's not that type of uh, place that we want to do. Just, just to that point, and I, I'm going to take a, a question from um, another question from the committee in just a second, but I noticed the application says you only have one, you're going to have one security person and, you, and maybe that's wrong, but feel free to correct me. If you're going to have an occupancy, it, it says there are 200 people in there, but I don't know what the total occupancy is going to be. Um, how, how, how will that work if you only have one security person? And well, I think, uh, Kwame, I don't know if you want to respond to that, but that security person that they were referring to is just the presence of a security person at the door. But internally, depending on the event, per, I think, uh, per 50 people, there should be one security personnel. And I'm not talking about the type of security where they're dressed in ninja outfits and they're searching people. That's not the kind of establishment that I want. We want a place where the presence of security will be there in a black suit and they'll be spread out you know, within the environment just in case anything does happen and they're able to direct people to the exits or whatever. It's that kind of presence, not a security presence like you're walking in and there's these batons and you got to go through metal detectors. It's not yeah, that no. type of vibe. Well, I... yeah. Go ahead, Kwame. Yeah, I mean, so the, the vision really is Blue Note mixed with Carolines. You know, that's really the vision. So my, my history at the college is, you know, I've, I've produced several jazz series. So that's kind of, um, and, and I'm a former musician myself. So that's kind of like what my love and Ray's love is the comedy. And we thought, you know, bringing the two things like a, a Blue Note feel and a Caroline's feel together would be a perfect fit for this space. Okay. So does that mean that you're going to have um, uh, more than one security or one for every 50 oh, yeah. people? Yeah. So uh, what is the total 100. occupancy? 200. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to have about four, you're going to have about four. Yeah. 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 Occupancy. 
Um, would you be willing to update your questionnaire a little bit? Sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me... it, just because it says one, and I want to make sure that we're, we're accurate. Ms. Anadu, I, I, I think you may have have a question. Feel free to go ahead. Yeah, so just building on um, Alejandro's um, question and just to Ray's point about the timing will be, these will all be shows that are booked in advance. And just given that the closing time is 2 a.m. and you're saying that there won't be holding or a place to kind of hang out after. So are the shows going to go as late as two or how late do you plan on oh, booking shows? No, okay. So I know like Dave Chappelle goes all night, but like, I just, you know, just trying to understand. So, so normally, normally during the week, it's not going to go to two. I mean, just in case we get a Dave Chappelle and we, we have to add all these shows, at least we have that window of opportunity during the week. On the weekend, when you do a guy like uh, Andrew Schultz, he's probably going to demand three shows. So we'll have a seven, a nine, and an 11. So that pushes it to where that crowd is leaving at 1.30. So then we close at 2. So the 2 a.m. is just that window of opportunity just in case we have a popular person that comes in and we need to add a show. But normally, especially during the week, when I do my shows now, I usually, um, when we do like a, like a one show thing in the evening, I'll, people will come in at seven, start at eight and they're out of there by 10. So that's like kind of like during the week, yeah. but we, we definitely wanted to put the 2 a.m. just in case we get that artist that has that demand and we needed to add that extra time. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the committee? Um, Ms. Cobb. I, uh, yeah, feel free to introduce yourself and, and also feel free to ask your question. Good to see okay, you. Thank you. My name is Akosua Cobb. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, but where are you located again? I'm sorry. I heard Brooklyn Navy Yard. Where are you? Where is the establishment? Uh, corner of, the corner of Washington Avenue and Park Avenue, right next to the BQE. It used to be a supermarket. Yeah, it's right across the street from me. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from the members of the committee? Not hearing yes, any. Brandon. Oh, Mr. Harrison, go ahead. Yes, thank you. So um, Kwame, and is it Ray? Is yes, Ray. Great. Right. So um, there's been a lot of talk about um, capacity, crowd, security, um, it may not have been asked directly, but it comes down to the noise level. So these are all about like security, quality of life, and um, how, how are you going to handle the volume? So, you know, I could ask a lot of questions, but it's late and I don't want to waste anybody's time. So I'm going to ask you, uh, you both seem like you've thought this thing through. You've talked about, you know, um, ensuring that there's adequate soundproofing that you want a quality venue, that you don't want a lot of drinking and hanging out. Two things come to mind that I don't think anyone has touched upon. And um, one is, so before I ask the last question, I do want to ask this one. Have, have, you, have you, Ray, or you, Kwame, given any thought to um, departure? Because you're talking about a venue that I think caps out at 200. So let's just say, no matter what the hour, whether it's, you know, you named three, three tiers, right? But whatever people are leaving, if in fact you, you do um, sort of coax the people out and they, you know, abide by that and they leave, 200 people leaving any location at once um, is a lot. Have you given any thought to that? Yes. Um, so I've done a lot of events in, in, in my days. And so what happens is whatever security is working inside, they now come outside. One person stays in, the other three go out and they direct people. Like in other words, they encourage people to, to go to move their along. Feet. Yes, move along kind of thing. That's that's usually on the on an outro. That's normally how it works. Security has to come outside. And then because of the parking in the area, we were trying to see if we can get a uh, valet company or something like that to, to, um, for the vehicles. So there'd be a smooth transition with the vehicles and people leaving. In addition to that, 
I spoke with the Navy Yard and they do have a shuttle bus that they were gonna make part of our route. So it goes from the, uh, from the A train on, on Fulton and it goes right past the venue. So I'm, I'm in touch with the, the programming director at the Brooklyn Navy Yard and they, they're excited about it as well. I spoke to someone at Steiner Studios who we've been kind of collaborating as well. And so that shuttle bus they're gonna make available to us for some of the folks when they're leaving. Okay, so my last question, and, and I really appreciate that, right? Because it sounds like you're thinking this thing through and Kwame too. Um, Kwame, I noted from the application, if, if I, I don't remember the application has changed a little, it's small, it's small font on my little tablet, but I think it said Kwame that you live out in Baldwin? Yes. All right, and Ray, you've already stated that you live uh, in the um, Clinton Hill houses on Waverly between uh, Green and Lafayette, I think? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm gonna ask you both a question. You can answer simultaneously or one at a time, either way, whichever order or not answer at all if you're uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but you seem very honest. And so I just wanna ask you what I believe is an honest question that will get to the heart of the matter. If things were different, and you had the opportunity to move into this building where you're opening or you're wishing to open this venue, you know, to move to an apartment above it. Would you be comfortable living above this venue? Yes, I Absolutely. would. We, it's funny that you mentioned that because we've actually um, inquired about uh, the apartments that's being renovated. Um, Upstairs. Yeah, I mean, there's very few available. Um, most of them are spoken for, but absolutely, I, I most certainly would. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Just one other question. Uh, wait, I heard somebody said one other question. Ms. Yes. Cobb, can you wait for one second? I just want to, Ms. An Ms. An Anadu, did you want to ask another question? Because your hand is still up. And I, you asked a previous question, but I wanted to understand, did you want to ask another question? No, I'm just very bad at lowering my hand. You're not bad. My at arm is very it. tired, so I'm going to put it down now. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Cobb, please feel free yeah. to go ahead. Uh, the gentleman lives in the area, but this is more of a comment. Uh, I hope you really thought about it. You know, parking around here is crazy. Yes. There's no parking in this area. And that is my biggest concern. Right now, there's no parking. There's the B under the BQE. I hope you really have given some thought to that. Yeah. I have. Um, the... the... The Brooklyn Navy Yard, again, I keep referring to them because I've done a couple of drive-in shows at the, at the uh, and by the way, so I, 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 during the whole pandemic, um, I was the king of the drive-in comedy show and I did it all over Brooklyn. I also did it at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So I, I have a good relationship with the, um, the management over there. And so they have space there if I get a valet company where we can park the cars one block away at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So that is definitely something that I thought about, which is really, uh, you know, a big deal. And also in the building, there's a parking garage. Really? Okay. Garage. Yeah. So it's not that much. It's no, not it's that not that much, much but, there, but there, there is a garage. Yeah. It's not huge, but yeah. which is why right. we looked into the, the valet. Okay. Any other questions from members of the committee? Uh, members of the committee, not hearing any more. Um, I'll move on now to members of the board and to the public. Um, and I'll note that uh, that I, and Matt ha has got had your hand up for quite some time. I'm sorry we've had to wait a bit to hear from you, Matt. But before you speak, could you just give us your full name so that we, we know who you are? And, and then if you can, please feel free to share your comments. Sure. My name is Matt Townsend, as long as you can hear me. Yep. OK, good. Uh, I am one of the residents in the building. Uh, it is a 123 unit residential building that Fairstead uh, management uh, markets as a family oriented building. Uh, and there are many young children in the building under four years old. I also happen to be one of those residents who lives in the part of the building that is being renovated above the space that will be utilized 
as a venue. We as residents have never received any outreach from Robert Dunn. I have, in fact have no idea who that is because he is not listed on any of our information as the property manager. It's a, a gentleman by the name of James. So I, I don't know what he said he sent to all the residents, um, but that, is, that has not happened. So there are an, a number of concerns uh, that people in our tenants association had about the opening of the venue. Uh, in fact, none of it necessarily relates to what goes on in the venue, but more so what comes out of the venue. Uh, due to the history of the neighborhood, as has been expressed, I believe, by Alejandro, that the idea that we are sort of in somewhat of an out of the way industrial area means that sort of people's behavior changes once they come out of the venue. That with the history of what was the chocolate bar on the Waverly side of the building, where there were often confrontations and certainly there were times uh, police having to come from uh, for shots fired. And this community board was also involved in the shutting down of whatever it was called at the time, either Rain or Touche, a nightclub down the street at 46 Washington. Um, and so that was, you know, always a problem. And again, you know, the, certainly thank you for helping in that situation. Um, like, so, you know, the, the concern that you're talking about that there's gonna be three shows per night uh, with 200 people coming and going and spilling out um, is, is not really all that, that comforting. Yes, there's Body by Brooklyn, which has also been a nightmare due to their lack of fire permits and fire alarms and the visits by the FDNY. Um, you know, so I say the, the concerns by neighbors are the noise that is going to come out of the club and onto the street. Um, and then what happens sort of with people staying in the neighborhood? I, I, I will say this now before it gets lost. If, if you're familiar with the neighborhood, I'm confused as to why you don't look at a place like Five Spot Soul Food, which has gone out of business and is a venue that actually hosted all of the things that you have said that you want to host. Or again, if you're familiar with the neighborhood, why not look at the Hall BK buildings, which have been completely renovated into office space and do not have any residents in them at all. It's one block away in each direction. Okay, I am familiar with- uh, Mr. Mr. Dijon, could I just give you one second here? Okay. Um, just a, a kind reminder for everybody now that we're in the point where we have some community feedback on an application. Um, everybody should direct their comments to the chair. And uh, just a kind reminder, everybody to be kind, not saying that everybody in, hasn't been kind to this point. Uh, Mr. Townsend, is it, does that conclude your, your, your comments on the, on the application? Oh, you're muted. Oh, I think Mr. Townsend is, is concluded, but if, um, if yeah, you know, I'm I'm good for right now. Okay, great. Were there any other members of the community or the board who wanted to make a comment about this application? Brandon, just a quick comment that, um, and we should have said this earlier. This is on me, but everyone just has two minutes to speak, and that goes for everyone. But we haven't been keeping time. Just want to throw that out there as we're approaching the hour of it. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I follow that generally, but I, I do want to get people's thoughts to be heard. Um, any other comments from the committee, uh, from the community on this application? Yeah, I, I just would recommend that they have a meeting with the community because I know the residents on my block would probably not feel very comfortable with that. Given all of the noise, rain, he talked about there was another club it was constantly fighting, uh, constantly problem. And I think you should have a meeting with the community around this, this issue and with the residents of the building. Okay, Thank, thanks, Ms. Cobb. Um, 
I, I want to turn it back to the applicants now because I think we've taken the everybody's comments on the on the matter. To one, ask you, you know, hearing that there are some concerns in the community and in the building and, and maybe some um, discrepancy between um, who, who, who actually has communicated and spoken with residents or, or, or not. Um, what, what is your feeling on, on how to approach the residents in the building going forward? And um, are, would you plan to set up a meeting? And how negotiable are you on the hours, particularly those ones during the week, which it didn't sound like you were uh, necessarily needing to use? Uh, the the so, 2 a.m. on Sunday to Thursday. Yeah, so, I'll, so and when, it, when it comes to the residents, um, we're certainly open to having a, a meeting with the residents in the building, presenting what our ideas are, give them examples of um, shows that we do, um, even shows that we're, we're doing in, in other spaces right now, we're open to having them come and check out the type of things that we do. Um, you know, one thing that we're not doing is having a club. We're not doing parties. There's no DJs or dancing. Um, this is a, a comedy club and a jazz club. You know, we're not, this is not the type of thing where people are gonna be stumbling out drunk. Um, that is what, what we're not doing, you know? So, so if, if that is a concern when it comes to, you know, a, a, the club that was down the block where people are fighting and type of, that type of thing, this is not that at all. Um, this is a, a, a older crowd, um, a sit down crowd uh to, to enjoy some food to enjoy some drinks while watching a show um this is not a party venue or a club venue or anything like that okay let, let me add on to it. first of all i'm 100 open to closing earlier during the week very yeah. flexible with that that's number one number two the club that he compared us to on washington and myrtle i'm very familiar with that that club is no comparison to what I do. Um, I've been in this industry, in this comedy industry for 25 years. I don't deal with, those are open mics, which you're talking about. That's, uh, they, do, they do open mic comedy, they do open mic hip hop. They do, or it's a lot, of, it, it was a younger venue that you're referring to. Um, if you look at my body of work, if you look me up on Google, I have a TV show called Laughaholics Live. It's on Amazon Prime. I'm on another level. I don't, that level of entertainment that they present doesn't compare to what I do 100%. Um, this is a, a, you don't even have to pay to get in that event. When you come to, to, to us, you have to pay to see the, the type of talent that we're bringing in. We're not bringing any fly by night people. I'm dealing with people that have been in the industry for a while and it's gonna bring out respectable adults. Um, I do understand the concern. I don't think that we should be compared to rain. I'm familiar with that place as well because I'm from the community uh, and, I'm, and, and I'm familiar with the hot spot or whatever, they, the five spot, whatever they call it, um, which I, I've seen the people hanging outside and that's not the type of venue that, I'm 58 years old. I, that's not the kind of a, a, a venue that I'm looking to do. It's got to be professional. It's got to be classy. It's got to be a place where I wouldn't mind bringing my wife to. So, right. And as for myself, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've worked for the city university for the past twenty years. I've been the executive director of the Performing Arts Center for the past seven. So the type of event that I would bring to the city university is the type of event that I would bring here. Um, you know, where where. We're looking to do a classy audience, um, jazz audience, comedy audience. That's, that's the type of thing that we're doing. And I would love to speak to anyone in, in any of the residents, present to anyone there, um, give you know, sh show them personally my uh, our pitch deck and the type of shows that we do, and and certainly invite them out to shows that we're currently doing. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, does anybody on the committee have a motion at this point? Uh, 
not seeing anybody, but I'll raise a motion for the sake of it, which is. Um, There's Nicole, Nicole raised hand hands raised. Oh, Brandon, Nicole's you hand. go ahead. You go. You go ahead, Brandon. I want to hear what, what you're going to say. Okay. Well, I by no means is this necessarily how I would plan to vote, but um, I will make a motion that we approve the application um, uh, with uh, some further discussion on the on the uh, the hours for closing and uh, uh, with uh, a condition that the applicants uh, meet with the, the residents and, uh, um, and and listen to their concerns about um, the, the, the uh, establishment. That's my that's my motion. Second that Alejandro seconds that. Okay. Thirty seconds. Okay, let's have a discussion on the motion. Any discussion on the motion? I'd like to see what that meeting, that community meeting, would look like. What the parameters are. I wouldn't want it to be something that happens, you know, down the road at some point. It seems almost to me like the approval of the application is contingent on that meeting happening and it being a sort of a wide reach of. The residents in the building. Okay. Um, I think what we need to. I, I think what we would need to do is to to make sure that the that that it's clearly spelled out that there be a meeting, and if there are additional conditions that we want to put upon that, then we should say what they are. Um, did you have anything in mind, Alejandro, beyond requiring that there be a meeting and that they listen to the concerns? Well, I, I honestly, I don't know the, they said it was 100, and, 100 plus units in the building. I mean, what sort of percentage of those residents would have to participate? Um, you know, that's sort of what I'm wondering. And, I, and also in the past, we used to have stipulations. So not suggestions, but stipulations. And so how do we make this meeting a stipulation? Is that even possible in the language of the, of the application? Well, I think when it comes to a stipulation that, it, that seems to be an, an aspect where it's not just us requesting it, but also the applicant agreeing to it. And I think we would hope to get to that point with with any suggestions that we would reach in, in, in terms of our discussion. Um, on, the, on the other point with respect to hours, what do we feel is reasonable during the week? Um, it's, a, it, it's a location that has some uh, residential uh, exposure above it. Um, it has, and, and at the same time, it's a comedy club that has uh, shows that are booked late into the uh, evening, particularly on weekends. Um, I mean, I would throw out a possibility of Sunday to Thursday midnight closing, um, Friday to uh, Friday Saturday, uh, two a.m. Uh, but do other members of the committee feel differently about that, and um, we can see what the applicant thinks once we get a consensus as a committee. I like it. Okay, yeah. thanks, Victor. I, sorry, I don't see my raise hand feature for some reason, but I, I actually would rather have the residents at the residential meeting suggest um, what time is appropriate to them um, for during the week. I, I kind of, I, midnight seems reasonable to me, but I, I really don't know. And I'll go further than I think what Alejandro was saying. And I, I'm not comfortable approving this at all until there's been a community meeting with residents. I just, we know how this tends to go when we put, you know, stipulations or considerations in an approval. And I, there is, we received so much, so we received so many letters of concern that I am just not comfortable approving this until the community really has a voice. And so I'd encourage the applicants to organize and hold that meeting as soon as possible um, and come back to us. That's my recommendation. Okay. Oh. Um, Any other members of the committee have a point of discussion? Yeah, I um, I totally hear what um, Jessica is saying, and I recognize that during COVID, it was a little more like when we were fully, fully, fully in the pandemic, it was a little more challenging to 
require community members to speak up and to you know hold meetings and get people um, together. Um, and I guess I just I also want to be careful about. I obviously care deeply about how the residents feel, um, but I also want to be careful about creating a situation where we're basically telling someone to open a business, but then handicapping them in terms of how late they can be open. Um, and to be clear, I agree with like midnight as is probably makes sense, but like what happens if the residents say 8 p.m.? You know, um, and again, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, but clearly, if you're someone with kids, your preference would be like, don't open or close super early. Um, but I also just feel like we live in New York and within reason, um, there is just a certain level of activity that comes with living within New York City. So definitely 100% agree that we should have a meeting to, that the community should be able to speak. I just wanna be careful about how much we're letting, or not letting, but how much of that decision is purely based on the residents versus us taking a view of like other things that we've, you know, as a board have allowed in the past or given a little bit more leeway on. I appreciate that. And I'll just clarify that I don't think a community meeting would be binding by any means, but we're elected as the community board to listen to the voices of the community. And to me, that step hasn't happened. Um, Fair. So let's hear, you know, the voices of residents. If they say what we think is an unreasonable time, we wouldn't support it. But right now they haven't done outreach and there's 123 units in the building. Um, That's fair. Mr. Newmark. Uh, thank you. I'll be brief. Um, on the positive side, um, in the chat, uh, we were just notified that Il Porto has uh, live jazz several evenings a week until midnight, and it's just a couple of blocks away. Um, on the other side of it, um, I'm deeply concerned about the um, uh, confusion about who was doing outreach and with whom that person was doing outreach. And I, I, I it's an unusual step to take. We haven't done it too many times, but I think I'm aligned with uh, Jessica. Given that, I would not approve um, this venue without having a meeting first with residents. And the community board has volunteered, I think, but please, if I'm saying that incorrectly, uh, Carol Ann, please correct me, but I think the community board has volunteered to facilitate such a meeting. Yes, we will. Okay. If asked to by the applicant. Correct. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That works. I would agree with that, but I, I also would ask that some members of the community, you know, we were right across the street, be included in that meeting also. Right. It doesn't have to be people who only live in that building. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like we want to amend this. Well, I don't know. You you have you made one motion, which is different. I, I've made a motion, but I, I'm I'm open to friendly amendments. Um, well, I'd like to first ask Brandon what the the two are. Is am I correct in understanding that the sort of the two options on the table are a a stipulation that the meeting must take place or a stipulation that the meeting takes place and then they come back to us which is less of a stipulation, maybe more. I'm curious, because as you all know, the SLA clock starts ticking. And so them coming back to us before the next meeting uh, complicates Matt. You know, I don't know how feasible that is. I would do it. So, if, and are we having a July meeting or does it go to executive board in July and August? Well, uh, I think it's probably gonna go to, ex it would probably go to executive in July okay. and August, but, um, but is there a distinction between the two things that I said, or am I misunderstanding? Yeah, I think there is a distinction. I think in one respect, there's a, in one respect, we could make a motion to approve the application and then ask the applicant whether they agree to um, a stipulation to hold this meeting with the, with the community. And then, um, then they don't come back to us. And at the same time, you know, they're bound by that on their application. Um, and uh, if they don't hold the meeting, they're in, in 
breach of their, uh, their license if, if the state liquor authority approves. On the other hand, um, we can decide to table the application for a month, um, ask the applicant to come back, um, ask for the meeting to occur in the meantime, and um, take a vote at that time and not take a position either way. And that doesn't change the fact that we can decide to uh, move to disapprove the application today or move to approve the application today without consideration for any of these conditions. So I, I think that that's the, the full options that we have. Um, Thank you. Any other thoughts from the committee or, or does anybody want to make a friendly amendment to my, my motion? Can I, can I just clarify um, timing? I don't know if my camera is on. Um, the executive committee will be the last meeting at this point until September um, for any business. At, there, at this point in time, there are no plans for a summer meeting. So we will be entering recess after the exec. Okay. And the exec is the last Monday of this month or the fourth Monday of this month. So is, is there a world in which that community meeting is squeezed in before then? I assume that's that's too short of a timeline. Oh, or maybe not. It's the I second of this month. Yeah. I think it's possible, Alejandro. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we would make sure that that happens. Okay. Well, that's, we don't know. We, like, we got to figure it out. It's hard we to get do. I mean, we'll do, we'll do everything within our power. I mean, we'll, um, you know, go back to our, our, our landlord and, and see if we can get a, a list of residents. And, you know, if we have to go door to door and put flyers that we have, a, you know, schedule a Zoom meeting, whatever, whatever it is that we would need to do to make that happen, um, to get everybody in one place on a Zoom. And it, it, it could even be more than one, right? If we have to um, uh, do several times in order to get as many residents as possible uh, between this building and, you know, some of the surrounding buildings. But, you know, if, if, if we need to make it happen by the, by the end of this month, we'll, we'll do what we need to do. Okay. So just so I, Brandon, I just want to make sure that I'm clear now. If we are not meeting again until September, it's pretty much we need to make a vote tonight then, right? Well, we're not required to do anything necessarily. We, but we, we have a motion on the table right now uh, to approve um, with uh, some con considerations. And uh, I think what we we have the option to do is to table this to another date, to approve it with those conditions, to disapprove it. Um, and uh, as far as I understand it, those are our options. So um, I think that, you know, when we, when we think about things, we, we should be considerate of things that are practical. Um, but I mean, I think with any motion, what I would suggest to the committee is that we try to do what we feel each of us is right in, in this circumstance. And um, it's not our prerogative to schedule community board meetings. Or it's our prerogative to try to vote in the correct way based upon what's the considerations with this application. So um, if we feel it's, it's right to table this after, till after the, they meet with the community, then um, let's do that. If we feel like it's, it's right to approve this with conditions or disapprove it, then let's do that. Um, but I think for right now, I've got my, my motion on the table to approve with conditions. And I, I would ask anybody else if anybody would like to make an amendment to that or, or potentially suggest an alternative. And I, I will say this, I can see the value of meeting with the, with the community. I think that's a good suggestion. Uh, Mr. Newmark? Yes, I, 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 the more I'm thinking about this and the more I'm listening to Mr. Clark and his, respons and his responsiveness to what we're bringing up, um, I would be inclined to um, amend your motion to be specific about the fact that uh, the club would close um, at midnight, um, Monday, Thursday, 
and uh, remain open until 2, 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday, and that they will um, meet with as many community residents as possible um, within the next 60 days and uh, report back to us in September um, with regard to the um, outcome and the decisions that have been made as a result of those meetings. And I would want to have um, community residents and obviously invited to that September meeting as well. So if, if every, anybody else or everybody else agreed to that motion, I'm sorry, one second. Well, to summarize okay. then what you're suggesting, Barry, you're suggesting that we do 12 a.m. close Sunday to Thursday, 2 a.m. close Friday, Saturday, and we require uh, the, the, the applicant meet with the community and then the applicant um, and the community will come back in September to give us an update on, on where things are at that point. Is that, is that yeah. your motion? Is yes, that it is. My yeah. gut feeling is that Mr. Clark and his colleague um, mean well and mean to do well. And, um, you know, uh, I think they should have the opportunity to do so once they've had the benefit of more community input. Okay. And the opportunity to think about what's possible at their end. Okay. Right. I've got your amendment. Does anybody else want to make any comments on Mr. Newmark's amendment before I can? Yes, Brendan, I do. Um, and Barry, I want to thank you for that because I think that's a, a, a happy, um, a happy compromise. Um, I was having my druthers with some of the discussion because, um, well, I won't say that I can't remember us ever having this situation come up before, um, but I pretty much close come to that. I don't recall this. And I remember um, there were quite a few meetings where we had lots of members of the public come and there was some very heavy discussion. The other, the other part, and I would wonder if Barry would consider this with his amendment or if I can amend also, is um, I, I actually had some concern. I wanted to go forward with voting on this tonight. Um, and I was planning on voting in favor, but I had some concern. And, um, and I do believe in, in the forthrightness and the honesty of both, um, of both our, uh, of the applicants. But I, I had some concern over the level of security, to be honest. 200 people with um, four security seems a little shy to me. I wouldn't say I wouldn't think that I know what the exact number is, but it seems to me that um, the the idea of security is security. So you have it there if you need it, and I can fully appreciate that this is a new startup and um, adding adding personnel costs money. But I, I think when it comes to security, when you talk about numbers, I think it's better err on the side of caution rather than not. So I was wondering if the applicant was um, amenable to hiring at least one more security staff member, just in case. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. No question about it. Um, so, um, with that in mind, I, 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 would, I would ask Barry if he would add that to his, um, that, I don't know what it is. We can handle the procedural answer. elements of that fine, John. Thank you for the, that suggestion. We'll definitely yeah. consider that too. Any, anybody else want to make comments on Barry's amendment or shall I decide whether to accept it or not? <laughs> All right. I, I just, I would just love for the community board to let, uh, the, uh, the members of the community, we need to know when this meeting would be. That, that's all I wanted to be a part of that meeting also. So how would we do that? Well, I, I, I've been kind of thinking about it in my head while, while we've been talking and I'm, I'm thinking probably creating maybe like um, two times, uh, like an earlier time and a late time and maybe run it for two to three weeks. So that you know, some people who, if if they don't, if they're not able to come in the in the evening. They can come to one during the daytime, and maybe so maybe like a Tuesday at two o'clock in the afternoon, and a Thursday at say eight o'clock or seven o'clock, and we do that maybe two or three weeks, so we can really kind of get the word out there, and and also if we can spread it out, maybe we won't have too many people, so that we can be able to really let people speak. And really hear what people have to say if we have it over a period of time i think something like that might work um, it seems reasonable 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I think with all of those things considered and having heard nothing else from anyone um, else on the committee, I will accept Barry's amendment along with John's suggestion. Um, so to summarize, uh, because we're going to take a vote here, the vote will be upon the applicant's um, application. Um, we're not, th this is not a vote on whether to table. It's a, a vote yes, is that you approve this application with um, a stipulation with the applicant that they will close their establishment by 12 midnight on Sunday to Thursday, 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday, um, that they will have um, a meeting um, with the community, that they will um, uh, provide us the, the date and, and time for the meeting and um, allow for not just people in the building, but also people in the community uh, to join, um, that they will have one additional security staff member, which would be five for clarity, and that they will come back in September um, if this is actually passed and um, report back on, the, on, on how things are going and that the community members will be invited to do the same. Did I miss anything there, Barry or John or Kaswa? I don't think so. Okay. So how are we going to vote on this application? Um, I'll vote first. I vote yes. Um, Ms. Cobb, how do you vote? Yes, based on what you just said, yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Okay. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Okay. Mr. Newmark? I vote yes, but just for clarification, was there a second? Yes. Oh, that Victor has given me a second. Okay. <laughs> thanks for thanks for the clarification. All right, I've lost everyone's squares. Um, okay, uh, Miss Thurston, how do you vote? I abstain. Okay, uh, Miss McKnight, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Miss Anadu, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. And did I catch you, Mr. Varela? You did not. And I am voting in favor of the motion. Okay. Thank you very much. I've, I've, uh, uh, I believe I've got everybody. I'm sorry. It's hard to keep track of the squares. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I would say good luck, but we'll see you again in September. Um, and uh, <laughs> no, good luck. And we we will um, we'll look forward to hearing about um, positive developments in this relationship. We we really hope that you maintain your the commitment that you've expressed to um, having a venue that is conducive to the residents in the building, and and hope that um, this will will be a, a pleasant situation going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda tonight, we've got 104-112 Bond Street, CK Hudson, LLC. Do we have somebody here from that location? Yes. Good evening. Good My evening. name is Max Bookman. I'm the attorney. OK. Um, Mr. Bookman, are you going to present or will the board office be producing? If the board that... office can, I would prefer that. Board office friends, are you able to present? If I have to, I must. I just have several screens. I just want to make sure that I'm not sure okay. if the right one will come up or not. We have Mr. Kasturi as well too. I just, I noticed that. Yes, uh, Mr. Kasturi the is the, is the applicant. I just okay. uh, wanted to, I was going to introduce him once the application popped up. There it is. No, that's cool. Okay. All right. um, may I proceed? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, good evening CB2. My name is Max Bookman. I'm an attorney. 
my firm is Pazetsky and Bookman, and we represent <clears throat> liquor license applicants uh, throughout the city, including in your district. I want to say hi to Carol Ann Church, who we deal with on a frequent basis and uh, who, I haven't seen your face in a while, but it, it is nice to see you. Um, and I want to thank you for all the support that you always lend uh, all of the businesses uh, that you deal with. Um, we're grateful for you. Um, with me is uh, Phil Dorn, an associate at our firm, as well as Vinod Katsuri, who is the president um, and US manager of Cafe Kitsune, which is what we're here to talk about uh, tonight. So uh, Cafe Kitsune is a Paris meets Tokyo uh, coffee house and bar. Uh, they have several locations around the world in France, Japan, uh, South Korea, China, and Thailand. Um, they also have one location in New York City in the East Village, which they've operated for many years at this point, has a liquor license as well. Um, this will be their second New York location, um, and it's gonna be in, uh, <coughs> in Brooklyn. Um, the type of uh, offerings they provide is quality coffee. Uh, they're, if you look at their website, they're very focused on their coffee offerings. It's a really a, a very much focused on being a coffee house in addition to tea, small bites, baguette sandwiches. Uh, at this location, they're gonna be offering ice cream, which is something new, um, and wine and spirits. Um, I mentioned it's a coffee house and bar. They are open throughout the day from breakfast uh, through the evening. And so by the evening, it's, uh, the focus is less on coffee naturally. Uh, and more on uh, wine and cocktails. Um, so the location tonight is, uh, for tonight's application is 104 Bond. That's on the corner of Pacific and it's the old building on Bond space, which I understand is, uh, is a beloved um, location in, in the neighborhood. Um, and I understand that because the node and his team have done a fair amount of outreach talking to neighbors um, in advance of tonight's meeting, which I'm just gonna touch on in a moment. Um, in terms of the details of the application itself, um, like I said, open uh, all throughout the day. So opening at eight o'clock AM, seven days a week, the closing hours depend on when, uh, what day of the week we're talking about. So from Sunday to Wednesday, they're gonna close at midnight, um, Thursday, 1 AM and Friday and Saturday, 2 AM. That's aligned with what Building on Bond had. Actually, it's a little bit earlier um, than uh, what Building on Bond had on uh, the weeknights. Um, there is a small outdoor dining area in the back. It's like a little back courtyard. It fits like three two top tables, um, but outdoor space of course is important. So uh, we wanted to mention that. That's gonna close at 11, which I, I understand is aligned with uh, what you generally recommend for outdoor space. Um, in terms of outreach, uh, we know that you suspended your petition requirement because of the pandemic, but they wanted to do as much outreach as they could do. So uh, in addition to the required posting, they set up a table outside of the, uh, the premises um, over the weekend and they offered samples of their food and they put together a two page packet of information about themselves, including their hours of operation, which they handed out um, <coughs> I think over a hundred uh, flyers, uh, the node will correct me if there was more. Um, in addition, they, um, they got into the building uh, through the landlord who gave them access and um, they didn't want to knock on doors because there's still some discomfort around that uh, because of the pandemic. So they did slide under uh, the doors of all 12 units in the building, their two page packet that they'd been handing out, which uh, again, gives the hours of operation also puts people on notice about tonight's meeting. So I don't know if anyone uh, will be coming from tonight's meeting from the community, but uh, um, we're, we'll be happy to hear uh, any comments they have tonight. Uh, in terms of comments that we already heard, it was mostly positive. Like I said, Building on Bond was a beloved institution. They're looking to, uh, they can't replace Building on Bond, but they're, you know, they, they look to bring their own uh, offerings to the community. Um, and the last piece of, piece of outreach, which I wanted to mention before I stop talking is, uh, they spoke with Howard Collins from the Borum Hill Association. Uh, representing the residents in the area, and they got um, a favorable reaction uh, from him. So with that, we are happy to answer any questions that the committee members may have. Um, just one question off the bat. Um, we're familiar with Building on Bond. Uh, they've been there for several years. We've heard, we've met, we've met with them on several occasions, and um, they, they close their outdoor seating every night at 10.30 p.m. Your application has the outdoor seating closing 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. on weekends. Um, 
Are you amenable to a low, uh, an earlier closing time for the outdoor area? Yeah, we should never have said 1 a.m. 1 on the weekends. Um, we, the intent was 11 p.m., but because uh, that, that's what we thought was uh, what this community board asks for. But if 1030 is what makes folks comfortable, uh, but no, it has no problem with that. I see him nodding his head. Uh, 1030 is fine. Okay, that's great, because I will tell you, we, we, um, it predates my time here, but I'm told that when building on bond came on, there was significant residential uh, neighborhood concern about the, the, um, the, 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 uh, the outdoor space. And it's, it's really right next to a residential community of Brownstone. So there's a, a very uh, high degree of concern um, that will be expressed if there is significant noise. With that said, Building on Bond worked out a relationship with the neighbors and there weren't many, there weren't concerns significantly expressed after they were, they opened. Um, but just wanted to raise that point off the bat. And at this point, I'll take questions from the committee. If I could just I make one quick response to that. Uh, sure. We, we wouldn't be applying for this location uh, unless there was a previous liquor license there because of the commit the community. Um, you know, we wouldn't be wanting to add a new liquor license to the neighborhood in this in this community. So we think one of the, the virtues of this location is that it was previously licensed. Um, and our uh, Vinod's understanding from the outreach that he's done aligns with what you just said, Mr. Chairman, that um, they've developed a relationship over the years. Um, it turned out all right, as far as we can tell, and we look to, uh, to pick up on that. Okay. Questions from the committee? Ms. Anadu? Yeah. Just um, following on, and I'm sure Alejandro would say this later if I didn't say it now, um, but just wanna make sure obviously that, and this is not a stipulation obviously for whether um, how I vote on this, but um, given I think Cafe Kitsune, and I'm familiar with the brand and um, the coffee shop, and just given some of the, the populations that have been hit hardest in Brooklyn, just wanna make sure obviously that you know your team or the team there is thinking about how they do hiring of you know black and brown people with actual paths to management um, and not just kind of you know back of the house um, and again not a stipulation but just want to make sure that that is meaningfully thought of in your plans. Thank you, Vinod. Do you want to make any uh, response to to that suggestion? Yes, 100%. Um, uh, we've actually, over the, the outreach period, been collecting uh, sort of resumes from residents in the area who've already been inquiring about positions, which was super exciting to see and have looked into the Brooklyn Navy Yard recruiting that was previously mentioned on the call today. So um, the, the other piece of it, too, is we are in touch with Phil Morgan, the previous owner operator, um, to ensure that we kind of create the same community vibe and um, one of the things that he mentioned is he's in touch with several homeless people in the neighborhood who he employed um, to help um, clean up the, the streets and even on the front of house. And um, we've been in touch with Phil to, to get their contact information when we're closer to opening to see if we can bring them on board. Thank you. Other questions from the committee? Mr. Chair. Mr. Andrews, go ahead. Uh, would, I'm just wondering, do you guys have accessible bathrooms? One, two, do you guys have an accessible entrance? How many entrances uh, would you guys have to this building? One or two? Vinod, I'll let you answer that. Yep, we do have uh, an ADA accessible bathroom um, within our plans as well as accessible entrances uh, given that is it is a, a ground level. Um, so that's uh, with, within the plan. Okay. Um, other questions from the committee? Mr. Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm looking at the applicant's um, application and maybe it's just me, but, and maybe this was covered, but I didn't hear it. Are you having a DJ? No, no DJ. Um, the music that we're offering is background music. And right. on occasion, we're looking at most, at most four times a year, offering acoustic live music. So not amplified, but you know, something like an acoustic guitar. Um, uh, you know, right, a, a that's what I heard. I'm sorry, but that's what I, I thought I heard you say or imply because I'm looking at the application and maybe it's just the, the size of the font on the small tablet, but it looks like there's hours with the line for DJ. 
there, I think we, we would like to preserve the ability to have some diverse music programming within the space. Um, as you all may know, um, Building on Bond and Robert Barr did have um, DJs almost every week, uh, as well as jazz sessions and live and acoustic. As Max mentioned, we would really be looking to do that more on a, a quarterly basis, so, so not as regularly. Um, but uh, we have had success in uh, our West Village location of having DJs in the space monthly on one Thursday from 6 p.m. to close. And, and that event is really designed to um, provide lower cost uh, pours of special natural wines and, and education around the wine programming that we do, as well as small bites um, and music in a seated atmosphere. Um, so just, just just to summarize that, uh, Mr. Harrison, so make sure that there is no uh, ambiguity in answer to your question. Um, acoustic back, excuse me, uh, recorded background music, um, live non-amplified music uh, at, at most four times a year, as well as DJ at most four times a year um, along the lines that Vinod explained the DJ to be. Um, and uh, that would be consistent. If we were to have those, those four times a year, it would be consistent uh, with our hours of operation. But uh, if that, you know, if there's feedback that we have that you want to provide us on that, we're happy to hear it. Okay, we can pick that up and commit uh, in the discussion. Um, any other questions from the committee on this application? Mr. Newmark. Yeah, I, I would just, I guess, like clarification on a um, couple of things. The, for indoor time, uh, you guys have listed uh, 1 a.m. on Thursdays and uh, I, I, you know, Thursday night is still a school night when, when school is in session. So uh, I, I know I'd be more comfortable if it was midnight, just like you have for Sunday through Thursday and Friday, Saturday to 2 a.m. And for the outdoors, I'm not sure what we agreed on. So outdoors, we had proposed 11, but I heard Mr. Ch the chairman suggest 1030 because that's what building on bond had. And so we're amenable to 1030. Um, Thursday, look, you know, uh, we, you know, we asked for midnight uh, Sunday to Wednesday. We asked for 2 a.m. Friday to Saturday. Our, our understanding of building on bond was it was 2 a.m. every night. We thought we'd split the difference on Thursday with, uh, with the 1 a.m. But your point is certainly heard. Um, and... Well, we're willing to discuss that. Okay, I think the the, the applicants have have offered some uh, willingness to discuss the hours, and we can pick that up a little bit more in in the discussion on the motion. Um, okay. Any uh, further questions for the applicant um, on on their application from the committee or from the community or any other board members? Not hearing any, do, does anyone have a motion they'd like to make? Yes, I'd like to motion to approve, Mr. Chair. Second. Okay. Uh, Victor, you were first. Uh, I'll give you the second. Um, any discussion on the motion? I, I, to Barry's point, I think, um, I, I believe the indoor hours, I'm most concerned with the outdoor hours. So if they would amend their outdoor hours, then I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm okay with their indoor hours as is. Okay. I think that's, that's kind of how I feel. And that was why I suggested the 1030, but it, it just let's talk about outdoor hours first. Does 1030 seven days a week for the committee members sound like an acceptable time or do, do people yes. feel like that there's any, any different hours we should have? It seems reasonable. Seems more than reasonable based it's a nice split, right? Because typically we do 11 weekends, 10 during the week. And so this kind of splits the difference all the way across. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I just like that it has continuity with what Building on Bond did because it's we, we have to remember throughout this that this is in a residential neighborhood. Okay, I haven't heard anything to the contrary on that, but for the, um, for the indoor hours, um, I think, Barry, your concern is with Thursday? Is that your concern? Okay. And you're, you're concerned with the midnight and do, do, do other, does anyone else, I, I, Alejandro is not as concerned about that as he is with the outdoors. Anybody else have a concern or thought about the indoor hours or Thursday? Well, Mr. Chair, I, I think that Barry, I'm sorry, Barry, go ahead. 
I was going to clarify my concern about Thursday was my, my question was, would they consider closing at midnight on Thursday, at midnight on Thursday as well as they're closing the other days during the week instead of 1 a.m.? Oh, OK. So it's one. It's midnight versus 1 a.m. on Thursday. OK, that, thanks, that's for, what correct, thanks for correcting me on that. Um, anybody have any th other thoughts on Thursday? Well, I was just going to say that I agree with Barry. OK. Um, I would just offer the view that I think that the applicant, has, I, I think that the the last location has been in the was was open pretty late in the in, on the indoors. Um, so I don't know if I'm necessarily in agreement with that, but at the same time, I'm not vehemently opposed to it either. The thing that does cause me a little bit of concern is, the, and I'm glad that. I, I think it was you, Alejandro, who caught it. Was the the fact that there's, or maybe it was John. I can't remember. Was the DJ and the, um, I I feel like this is not a location where there there should be a DJ. I could I could deal with some acoustic music at this location, but but I I, I don't really see a circumstance. I I I don't know how. Building on Bond or Robert did it, but um, I, I'm I'm just not feeling the DJ too much in this regard. Does anybody have any other thoughts about that, or am I, I am I the only one who feels that way? I would agree, Mr. Chair. That's that's why I I raised it. Um, I was checking why the applicant's um, representative was speaking, and um, I think that you know he spoke very honestly to it. I I, I do think that with me, perhaps it was. It was a matter of the size of the font, and I, I think there are more, there are more things listed on the left than there are lines for. But um, Alejandro, was this was this not the the location, or was it near the location where one time we did have this meeting that I referenced during the last presentation, where there were like twenty or thirty people that came um, to voice their concern? Was was that building on Bond, Alejandro? I believe um, both building on Bond and. Caroline can jump in here, both building a bond in Rucola, uh, yeah. which, is, which isn't far Nearby. away, brought out many people right. and both, both management and owners for both places proved to, um, to be good neighbors. And right. Ruc Rucola, when they expanded, those same people who complained came back to support their expansion. Right. Um, and I believe it might've been the same for, for building on bond. So, uh, so to follow up on the other question, I, I'm not as concerned with the DJ, building on bond did it and they're going to keep in line with what Building on Bond did. I, I don't know of any complaints unless Carol Ann wants to share any from that location. Okay, anything to share in the way of complaints for the location, Carol Ann? Um, we once received complaints a few years about um, from, from one uh, resident. Um, I, I, I can't really say how that got resolved, but that was the only time and it was one resident. Was it about noise or was it about uh, uh, something else that was specific to the location? It, 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 it was about a lot of stuff. There were complaints about use of the sidewalk. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the outdoor seating um, that um, patrons would, you know, stand in, in, in the sidewalk chatting. Uh, you, you know, it's a neighborhood spot. So I think what was happening a lot was people would see each other and just stand there chatting. And some patrons would have bicycles that they would um, park on the sidewalk. So it was those type of complaints. Okay, well, thanks for sharing it. Um, May I be heard for a moment? Um, can you just give, give us one second? Mr. Newmark, I think you were going to add something. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, if we want to be consistent <laughs> in terms of um, having them follow along with some of the parameters of uh, building on bond, then we should let them have the DJ uh, every three months, like they're suggesting, since, okay. uh, since um, bond did it even more frequently. Okay. Who, who is it who made the motion on this? I'm it's slipping my mind at the moment. I did. You did. Okay. So out of all of these suggestions, John, as the maker of the motion, which ones do you accept? Do you accept uh, reducing the Thursday hours from 1 a.m. to 12 a.m.? And do you yes. accept, do you accept uh, um, the 
do you do you feel like we we shouldn't limit the DJ? I was the one that raised that, but um, I would go with um, the better selves of this committee, that being um, Barry and Alejandro, uh, who have have basically made the case that you know um, pattern um, pattern existence with building on bond that they, that the applicants should be allowed the same pattern that um, building on bond had. My only my only druthers with that was, and I think Alejandro essentially said yes, John. That, that your, your recollection is correct that we had this, and it happened not once but twice. We had this huge contingent of representatives of the community there. Um, my, unless I had the venue wrong, I don't think I do. They, they were very particular about a whole lot of stuff. So um, I'm glad what I hear from the applicant and what I hear from their representatives is, is, is that um, it's, I don't know if positive is the right word, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of negative feeling about this application. But Okay. Um, well, I just need you for a procedural thing here so we can move this forward. Right. So Are you agreeable I, I, to the 30 closing for the outdoor hours and, and then yeah. we can see if there's a second for it and, and, and try to take a vote because I know we're at 837 already. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Okay, cool. It, Victor, do you still second this? If, if not, if, it looks like Barry seconds this. So, um, Barry, do you second this? Okay. So let's take a vote. Um, okay. I'm in favor of, of the of the motion. Um, Mr. Varela is in favor of the motion. Mr. Newmark, are you in favor? You're in favor. Mr. Harrison. In favor. Oh, there's 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 Andrew. Yeah. Victor. Victor. In favor. Uh, Mr. Harrison, are you in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Thurston, are you in favor? Favor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cobb. Yes. Okay. Mr. Varela. In favor, in favor. Okay, Ms. McKnight? In favor. Okay, and Ms. Anadu? She had sent a thing that she'd be right back before. Oh, okay. So Maybe she hasn't gotten back yet. Stains for right now, but we, if she wants to vote on it later, we can have her vote on it. Um, motion passes. Um, thank you very much. Um, I, I would just suggest uh, when you when you commence this establishment, um, I know that the folks at Bo Building on Bond did this, but not as a condition of the motion. Consider putting up like signs to say to tell people to be quiet on the outdoor seating area, because I know that they did that at that location and whatever they did worked with the community. So we, we certainly want whatever you guys do to work with this community as well, too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just uh, my question that I had was uh, it wasn't clear to me what the ultimate uh, status of the amendments were so what was it that was just voted on so i could make sure that i understand well the outdoor hours is 10 30 seven days a week okay um, but why so but the 1 a.m on thursday and the the dj's three times uh four times a year uh the the dj is as indicated in the in the application mm -hmm. and um the uh, the the hours are as as indicated in the application, with the exception okay. of the outdoor. Okay, understood. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Brandon. Day. If I may, Brandon. If I may, to to Mr. Bookman and and Mr. Kasturi. Um, also, the Baltic houses and the White Cup Garden NYCHA houses um, might be a good place to post if you're looking for employees. Thank you, Alejandro. That's absolutely Definitely. correct. Thank you for Thank that you. suggestion. And thank you for your time. Have a good evening, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, so we're, we're still going down the agenda, and we've got 55 Water Street Empire stores. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, Donald Bernstein on behalf of the applicant. This is a uh, application for a new license. It's, it's at 55 Water. I know you're all familiar with the building. It is an entirely commercial building that abuts Brooklyn Bridge Park. The space that we're applying for is the old sugarcane space. It's on the river side, not the Water Street side of the building. Sugarcane operated the space for, I think, about three years and unfortunately uh, closed last year during the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, turns out that the owner of the building, Empire Stores, is now going to take over that space and operate it. 
Um, we're in the process of finalizing arrangements with a very well-known James Beard award-winning chef. We can't disclose who that is yet because we haven't inked the deal, but it's someone uh, who is uh, a decorated and award-winning chef and, and is gonna bring some great chef-driven cuisine to uh, the space. And I think when you find out who it is, you, you'll all be very pleased. Um, the footprint of the space is just what Sugarcane had. Um, it will have um, 55 tables and 176 indoors. There'll be outdoor seating. It is on the west side, so it faces the river. It is not on Water Street. There's no seating on Water Street. Uh, and there'll be 107 seats in that outdoor area. Sugarcane also had outdoor seating. The hours will be from 8 a.m. until uh, 2 a.m. And um, uh, I think that's all I wanted to tell you. Then we'll take questions. I think I just wanted to add that uh, in terms of garbage, the building has its own loading dock and all of the restaurant and food and beverage operators bring their garbage to that loading dock. So uh, we will not be adding any, any pressure on the neighborhood in terms of that. Um, in terms of hours, we've tried to stay consistent with other um, restaurant venues in the building. I know Chaconi's, which is just on the other side of the lobby area of the building, I think actually has a 3 a.m. license. Uh, we're we're going to close, however, at 2 a.m. And that's the application. Um, thank you. Um, can you just talk a little bit about the outdoor area of this location, where it's where it's located? Yeah, so if you keep scrolling down, I think Carol Ann may be in charge of that. You'll see the floor plan and uh, you'll see where the seating is. So it should be the next page. So you'll see it on the top that faces uh, west. That's that's that 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 faces the river uh, right there. And then there is a small spur on the side. Um, then on the below this floor plan is the area where timeout market is. It's not on the plan. Uh, and then of course, there's another group of stores before you get to Water Street. So it's, it's not even close to Water Street. You can see photos of the outdoor space. Okay. And Sugarcane uh, had uh, that outdoor seating. Okay. And your plan is you want to close the outdoor space at, um, 2 a.m. and you're going to have an acoustic, you're going to have acoustic or a DJ or live music or dancing until well, let me clarify that. 2 yeah. So no. Um, so uh, as a matter of general course, general operation, there will only be background recorded music. There's no dancing, there's no DJ, there's no live music when it's open to the public as a matter of course. The only time there would be DJ live music or dancing is if it gets booked for a private event. It's not going to happen that frequently. Uh, this restaurant is really designed to be open to the public and intended to be open to the public. But if somebody does want to book a, a Christmas party or private event and they want to have uh, a DJ, we want the ability to do that. But it would be limited to those uh, buyouts. Will the DJ be indoors or outdoors? No, we're not going to have a DJ outdoors. No DJ. And what, what floor is this outdoor area located on? I'm having a little trouble it's reading on the, ground the diagram. Floor. Okay. Okay. There's not going to be any DJ live music outside ever. Okay. Um, questions from the committee? Any questions from the committee? Mr. Harrison, I see your hand. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, what, um, what sound mitigation is in place? I let... Uh, my client answer that. Whatever was there with sugarcane, but I'll let them answer that. That's correct. Um, hi, this is Mayhul Patel. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Midtown Equities, which um, owns and developed uh, Empire Stores. And um, sugarcane, our previous tenant, um, had you know sound mitigation put into the space um, in the ceiling. Again, you know above that is office space, um, which is usually done you know used in different hours in the restaurant. Um, and then we're actually today when sugarcane was there there was a opening to the timeout market. We're actually putting up a wall between the market and um, the restaurant. Okay. Um, other questions from the committee for the applicant? Uh, 
more comment than question, just the, the general push. I know you know this, Mr. Bernstein, because you hear it all the time. I hope it still resonates when I say it, but uh, local hiring, local hiring, local hiring, communities who need it most. I also want to say something that I, that, you know, is in the news all the time, but that we never talk about in this committee, but it has bearing. Um, uh, just a sort of a general reminder about the culture in restaurants, right? Only because you mentioned the James Beard chef, which actually sounds very exciting, looking forward to that. But uh, sometimes I feel like nowadays, whenever the big restaurants and the big chefs appear in the news, it's because the bigger they are, the meaner they are behind the scenes. And so just a reminder to that uh, these restaurants, you know, are full of people, employees, workers, and that I hope there's a culture of respect that comes with the notoriety. And I'm sure that uh, Empire Stores will make sure of that. And I uh, knew you were going to talk about the hiring. So uh, I let them know and they assured me that that is on there, uh, that that's the part of their plan. Thank you. Is, I ask. Go ahead. Is, is there any thought to the need for a 2 a.m. closing for the outdoor seating area? It's just we literally had a, a 55 Water Street application last month, which is granted on the other side of the building, but we gave them a 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. outdoor closing. Yeah. And how, how do we reconcile that? Is it really three hours worth of difference between the two sides of the building? Yeah, I, I understand that. I, I think that, you know, um, that was my application last month. And I think that one of the points that was made was that none of the outdoor seating is on Water Street that everything is on the uh, park side. And because there are residents on the other side of Water Street, uh, you were rightly sensitive to those residents, which is why that applicant agreed to the earlier hour. I think that um, if we were asking for seating on Water Street, which is not adjacent to it, we, we would be equally sensitive to that. I think the reason for it is it, it was just consistent with, um, I'm not sure if Sugarcane had that, I don't wanna represent that, but I know that Chaconis has late night uh, outdoor seating. And I think the only reason for the deviation from an earlier closing hour is because of the fact that you've got a street, uh, a, 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 a large building, you know, and, and you know, then the outdoor space that's separating from the residential tenants. There's nobody that would be hearing it. And to my knowledge, and I also do work for Chaconis, They've been there for years with, with a large outdoor area, and I'm not aware of any issues they've had with that. So certainly, you know, willing to hear your concerns about it, but I think that's the reason why we're coming and asking for that. That makes sense, and I think I hear those points. The thing is, is that I'm looking at Chaconi's website, and it indicates their hours of operation are until midnight, seven days a week. So that's a little right. bit different than 2 a.m. No, well, the reason is because when we talk about hours with you and with the State Liquor Authority, we're talking about an all-out hour. When a restaurant posts its hours, it usually posts the hours by which you have to get in in order to be seated. A restaurant doesn't say when all patrons have to be out. It usually says, "Our door. if you want to have a meal, you got to be there by midnight. So if their last hour is midnight, then you got to allow an hour and a half for eating. So it's, it's very consistent with what we're, we're saying. Okay. So I guess then my question would be um, just to close this point off. Is there any flexibility on the outdoor hours or are you steadfast it has to be 2 a.m.? And, and is there a particular reason for that? Um, can, can I just throw something out? Can I, can I throw out 1 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday? You, you can throw out whatever you like. And we'll, the we'll, certainly, we'll, we'll certainly talk about it in our discussion section and appreciate your willingness to be flexible. Yeah, I think I, I think that, you know, uh, Mihul, if, if that's OK with you, um, 1 a.m. Sunday through Wednesday and 2 a.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday in the outdoor space. OK, well, we'll, we'll talk about it as a committee. Sure. Uh, who knows? I could be the only person with this concern. So okay. I, I, I'm going to leave it at that. But any other members of the committee have a question for the applicants? Not seeing any, um, any members of the public or other community board members have any questions for this applicant? I do. Uh, Ms. Quint. Hi, hi, I live in Dumbo. I live around the corner. Um, and um, I actually am uh, good with the location. It's facing the river. It's a big difference um, than on Water Street. Um, Sugarcane was a great part of the neighborhood and I hope this is as well. Um, just in recognition that Dumbo as a community and a neighborhood of residents is besieged by 
um, tourists uh, more and more every month. And I think this will probably just add to that um, as another um, notable establishment. So I would love to hear you speak about um, things that you can do for the community and residents specifically um, as a give back for uh, people who live in the neighborhood. Sure, I'm gonna let um, my colleague Jeremy speak to that, if that makes sense, Jeremy. Um, Sounds great. Hi everyone, Jeremy uh, from uh, the, the restaurant operation team. I, I think in, in Alejandro and, and hi everybody, it's been a pleasure listening uh, to, to everyone speak this evening. I think Alejandro has, has been uh, aligned with, with something very important to us as a company, which is the, the first way in which we give back to a, a particular community is we provide job opportunity. And a part of our company culture is not just to, uh, to, to hire, uh, but it's also to provide job training and career growth and teach a set of skills that exist, of course, beyond the, the, the corners of our own establishment. We look at that as, I think, the first way in which we can give back uh, to the particular area. And, and then I think, and, and I'm hopeful we'll be able to share more details about what we're doing precisely soon. Uh, but I think that uh, when we when we have the chance to peel back the curtain a bit, you'll see that uh, what we're looking to do is, is support, I think, a general uh, movement here in New York City in food, which is to support uh, local agriculture. So, so we're giving back to our community locally and globally because we're, we're treating the planet well. And, and that's something that I think we see, uh, you know, right at our, our doorsteps here in New York City, but something that we see as a benefit to the community at large as well. Uh, but recruitment is something that we see, of course, as, as our entry into the community. And, uh, and, and of course, we'll, we'll have a multilingual approach to get there. Uh, restaurants, as as we know, are uh, a mirror that that uh, certainly the job force that looks back into the community and it's something that that we take very seriously and uh, and it's a a responsibility that we feel quite uh, quite proud of. If I may, and just to be a little more specific, and those are all um, those are all important give backs to the larger community, but for the people who live in Dumbo, um, because of all of the tourism in the area, you. Know, it's hard to go out to dinner in Dumbo on the weekend um, in terms of going into places. You know, we have a lot of high priced places in the neighborhood um, because of the setting. Um, so I'm actually talking more specifically about things for, you know, neighbor nights, um, reservations set aside, um, uh, Chaconis, I don't know if they still do, but they've done a family meal night, which is a very good value for people um, in the neighborhood. Those are the specific things I'm asking for, for people who live in Dumbo and endure a whole lot of um, stress on the neighborhood for the good of the um, larger community. Sure, and, and, I've, and that's a very good point. I, I think most of us live in neighborhoods that, um, that well, I, I don't live in Dumbo, admittedly, but um, but the small tourism that I see in my own, I, I have a relationship with and, and I understand uh, the, the, the challenges there. I think that's a, a very important consideration in, in terms of reaching out to the community to connect more directly with the neighbors, specifically with those who live within the, the five or 10 block radius of, of 55 Water Street, an area that, uh, that I've seen from when I was a child evolve in incredible ways and in ways that that seem much more expedited over the last 10 years and so I understand uh, or have some insight into what what you feel as a resident one of the things that we can do to, con to connect with the community more directly uh, is to be available to them to be present to them uh, to, to, to hold tables to hold inventory as we call it inventory that's based within our dining room for locals and I think uh, that's something that we'll prioritize and uh, and and ensure that we're connected with our our local community to to achieve that goal. Yeah, I would appreciate that because you know we we endure a lot with Dumbo House and everything, all of the crowds that come with Empire Stores and um, you know those um, environs. You know some of them have pros, but there just should be consideration for people who live in the neighborhood, not just people who are visiting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Quinn. Any other questions from members of the community or other board members or anyone else at the meeting? 
With that said, do we have a motion on the application? Move to approve. Okay, motion from Alejandro. Second. Second it. Second from Ms. Cobb. Um, and I just wanna confirm, Ms. McKnight, are you on this now with the minutes? Because it looks like we've, we, we may not have Ms. Thurston. I am. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Um, let's all just try to speak clearly so that Ms. Cobb, Ms. McKnight can understand um, what we're doing given uh, that she's just taking over mid-meeting, which is a struggle for anyone. Um, okay, so discussion on the motion. Um, I, does anybody else share my concern about the outdoor air, area or am I sort of the only person? Alejandro, you have, you have any thoughts on this or? or you know? it's, just not, it's just not something we typically do, 2 a.m. Uh, cafe, uh, uh, Mr. Oh, forgotten. Mr. Bernstein talked also about that ledge around the corner, which is, I uh, didn't fully understand. I know it doesn't, it doesn't no longer faces the park, the water. So is there a residential there that we have to worry about? Just in general, 2 a.m. closing time for cafes. Just, I, I'm hard pressed to think of any one that we've ever approved. I could be wrong. Someone could no, correct we're me. we're talking outdoor seating, right? I outdoor mean, seating, indoors right. Indoors is fine. It's no, yeah, indoor is fine. Indoor is fine. Yeah. I'm not talking about the outdoor. Talking specifically about the outdoor, uh, I, I must be honest that with it, in this district, that is the area of the district I know least. I can't envision that block right now. And so, I mean, if it, if it faces the water, then, you know, maybe this is a non-issue, but I don't think that's the case. There's life in between there. Okay. Ms. McKnight? I do know that location because I actually uh, will go to Sugarcane and it faces the water. It's close to the carousel. Okay. Um, Thank you. Any other committee members have any have any thoughts on the on the outdoor hours? Mr. Newmark. Sorry. Um, ordinarily, I would um, have concerns because of how uh, late 2 a.m. is. But if it is true that um, the restaurant next door is open until um, 2 or 3 a.m. outdoors, it would seem to me to be uh, unfair to require this place to close earlier. And it is on the water. That's all there is there. I am very familiar with the area. Um, so the seagulls can go, you know, sleep a little longer, you know, during the day. What, what <laughs> restaurant do we think is closing at 2 a.m.? Sorry? The Checo. The Checo? Is that their name? Did you mean Chaconis? Chaconis, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I the, the, the website says midnight, seven days a right. week on Chaconis. Um, Mr. Bernstein gave an explanation, which may or may not be correct. It, it sounded logical, if it is correct, that that's their last time that you can walk in there to get a meal. And if okay. that's the case, they're not going to close up for another hour and a half or so, two hours. So that'll bring them to the 2 a.m. So assuming that he wouldn't be lying to us and that that's the truth, I, don't, I have no problem personally in terms of my vote for them to have the 2 a.m. closing outdoors. Okay. Um, any other members of the committee have a thought on the outdoor hours or anything else about the, the application? And we have, who is the maker of the motion here? Was that? I, I am the maker of this motion. Okay. So what would you like to do in terms of the, uh, your, the, the power? You know, the applicant has said that they're willing to go to 1 a.m. On, on Sunday to Wednesday. Um, I, 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 some committee members feel like this, that this, I, I, two committee members have felt like this has been, that this faces the water and that it may not be fair given uh, the, the other location also closes very late. Um, I, I'm concerned about the late hours, but I, I don't want my concern to be the, com the committee's concern necessarily. Um, and, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, what, what, what are you thinking now, Alejandro? Do you, would you, do you feel like um, we should go forward with the, uh, the hours that the applicant is willing to commit to, or should we suggest something else? I, I, I rem 
I remain slightly concerned about that ledge. If someone could just tell me if that side street, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear Okay. You. If someone can tell me if this, that ledge that wraps around, does it wrap around to Dock Street or, or is that? This, uh, if I may, um, thanks Alejandro for the question. Um, that little ledge that uh, goes around that L, if you will, um, it's on old Dock Street. So it's the closed off section of Dock Street um, across the street, you know, across the way is St. Anne's Warehouse, if you're familiar with it. This is the path you would take to go to the carousel, basically. Um, but there's no um, uh, vehicle traffic between, you know, on Old Dock Street. Um, and it should be... I assume no residential there either. Correct. There's no, there's okay. definitely no residential on Old Dock Street. Okay. Then um, I, I, I withhold my, my concern, or I retract my concerns about 2 a.m., but I would really like for the minutes to reflect that we are making this exception because they are, it faces the water and there is no residential in the immediate vicinity. I, don't, I wouldn't want this to become a habit or for every other restaurant to start pointing to this one as, as the reason why we're doing this. Okay. And I see, and I see um, my colleague, Ms. Quint, nodding along and who lives in the area, and I, I, I'm glad to see that. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Um, in that case, we're going to vote on the motion. Um, and Mr. Newmark, how do you vote? Vote yes. Okay. Mr. Varela, how do you vote? Uh, I vote in favor. Mr. Harrison, how do you vote? Yes. Um, Ms. Anadu, how do you vote? Abstain. Uh, Ms. McKnight, how do you vote? Yes. Um, Ms. Cobb, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Varela, did I get you? How do you vote? Yes, you, you get me twice at each vote, and I love okay, it. Okay, we'll only Just count Just don't you count once. me twice. Okay, good. Count you yes. Once. You count twice as much as the rest of us, Alejandro. <laughs> Mr. Andrews. Um, yes. And I'm going to abstain on this. Um, and uh, um, I think that, did I miss anyone on the committee? I don't think so. Um, all right, so the motion passes. Thank you. And Thank you very much. To be clear, that's with the understanding that you'll have the 1 a.m. close on Sunday to Wednesday. Is that, does that make sense on the outdoor areas? Yes, it does. Say yes, Bob. I think Donald froze there, but yes, I believe that. Yes, that's. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. All right. We're down to the final license, and yeah. it's certainly taken a while. Uh, 41 Washington Street, Cali Canuck. The final new license, that is. Um, hi, yes, I'm Kevin Chimini. I'm representing Cali Canuck. Um, we actually, this isn't necessarily a new license. We were here a couple years ago and got approved. Um, the issue became just, uh, we were well into construction leading into COVID and kind of hit a wall and our liquor license that was previously approved got, um, it, it kept getting extended and then it just sort of ran out over COVID and we're reapplying for the same, basically under this exact same conditions. Okay, so there's nothing that has changed about the hours or about the circumstances of the, the application from when mm -hmm. you first came before us? No, it's all exactly still the same. Okay. And you, I'm sorry, you have, you have operated and have, have there been any concerns expressed from neighbors or people in the area? We, um, we haven't operated at this location, no. Okay. We, were, we were like 80% into construction okay. and basically got shut down. There's the, that's the layout of the bar. We're right at the corner of 40 of uh, Washington Street and Water Street, kind of in the heart of Dumbo. Um, you, you know, we were, there's some photos even, I think, I believe down below in the application that show 
uh, what we're doing with the build out, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, sort of a nice, I'm an, I'm an architect by trade. We're building this like sort of fluted cast concrete bar with um, fluted plaster and sort of a, a sort of an upscale shared plate dining experience sort of right at the intersection. That was the, the space before we took it over. It used to be a kid's clothing store. So a huge amount of the work that has gone into it has just been converting what was a, a kid's clothing store into a bar, which, you know, obviously infrastructurally uh, has a lot, um, you know, we had to core drill 64 holes for plumbing and dealing with a lot of stuff with just like all of the, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing and whatnot. And we were, you know, kind of getting to this detail finish level architecturally and and you know opening a bar we were sort of slated to open last summer our goal was at you know mid to late summer opening last year and just got totally shut down um you know and until recently you know being more bar forward than restaurant i mean we're a bar restaurant but um you know in, until recently bars you know were 60 seats or 55 and about two thirds are bar height one third are table height so we're definitely you know until the pandemic has kind of come out of its current state. It was it was a bit confusing and, and unknown when we would be able to open up officially. So we're now just got our sights set on late this summer and just sort of need to get finalized construction and get our doors open. Okay. All right. Um, questions from the committee. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Andrews. Uh, just wondering if. You guys have an ADA bathroom and is your front entrance or entrances wheelchair accessible, sir? Uh, yeah, you, we do have, you can see in the plan there, there's an ADA bathroom called out with a big circle there, but right behind the bar, the unisex ADA bathroom. And we are located a half, sort of a, a half level up, um, but there's a long ramp that goes all the way up Washington street and connects at front street that basically is, is, is on the bottom of the page here. So it is wheelchair accessible for sure. Thank you, sir. Yep. And we do, and I know since it's come up numerous times in uh, the call already, we, we also operate the uh, sort of beer and wine venue underneath the Manhattan Bridge called Dumbo Station. It's milled out of solid wood from old reclaimed Brooklyn water towers. And it's, a, it's an outdoor, sort of public venue that we do in partnership with Dumbo Bid. Um, and so we do a lot of community programming with them. We were closed all of last year as well due to the pandemic and are reopening now. Um, it's a lot of community-based events. You know, Monday through Friday this year, we're doing uh, um, live fitness classes, game like large scale games, cornhole and connect four. Um, we do art, drink and draw with different artists. Uh, there's a there's a library program uh, for kids and some live music stuff there. And in doing that and having run that for a, a season with them, we have a relationship with Gleason's, who is our next door neighbor on the wash on the Water Street side. And we've actually employed a, a fair amount of their guys to help with just you know uh, odds and ends jobs, some general security and oversight and. Uh, you know, we are close to Farragut and, and, and do have a desire, you know, we, I'm a Dumbo resident. I've had my office in 68 J street Dumbo since 06. Uh, you know, I've lived in Vinegar Hill and, you know, this was always meant to be a very Dumbo centric, um, you know, locals kind of establishment as well as catering to now what, you know, this corner obviously gets a lot of street traffic due to the, the nature of what Dumbo has become. So. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that. Any other questions from members of the committee? Hearing none, any questions from any board members or members of the community? Ms. Quint? Hi. Um, and so everyone knows this is like, a, this is like the block that's like the thick of things uh, in Dumbo with Washington Street. Uh, that's closed now for open streets. Everyone, it's a block where everyone goes to get their photo taken just so everyone can visualize. Um, sorry if I missed, um, cause I don't think it was also on the announcement, um, this application, maybe it was late in coming in. So definitely wanna just make sure I'm clear on behalf of the community um, on everything. Cause I don't think it was on the email. 
Um, so sorry if I missed, but what are the hours? Um, I believe we have listed uh, till midnight, uh, Monday through Wednesday, uh, two o'clock Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I think maybe even midnight on Sunday or, or earlier. Um, it's not a it's not a late night late night bar. I mean, we plan we kind of assume that midnight. You know, knowing how Dumbo really functions weekday, I, I feel like you know because I've lived in and worked in the neighborhood for fifteen years. Um, we really you know only are pushing the indoor hours a little later on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, just to, you know, allow for that kind of late night bar, you know, we, we really do intend to be a local, as tourist, touristy as that intersection has become, um, we all do kind of know that uh, the tourists leave Dumbo. We're not in, in Empire stores where we're part of Soho House and attract like a larger kind of uh, gathering there for all the things that happen there. We. That once that once the sun goes down in Dumbo, the tourists don't really hang out on Washington Street anymore, and we really do plan on it, it being more of a a neighborhood. You know, we'll get that happy. You know, we're in 55 Washington. We have 45 Main across the street. There's a lot of people that work around there. We really wanted to be this kind of after work, you know, go to kind of um, uh, you know happy hour place for the community, and then late night because they're. You know, the reason I, I got involved with this project and, and sort of um, was helped start it was that, you know, at least a couple of years ago, there just weren't as many places for Dumbo residents like myself who, you know, are a little older, have kids, but want to have a nice place to go out and have, have a meal too. Um, you know, so we, we do want to sort of support that as well. And we think that given that the way that, you know, that block functions and, and where we're located, that we really will be more of a community place like we're sort of want to be Dumbo's neighborhood corner bar. Um, yeah. No, I mean, obviously I live right there and I'm, I'm with you that Dumbo needs more regular, uh, regular places. My only thing is just, you know, just making sure that the communities had enough opportunity to weigh in on the hours. I don't live on Washington Street. I live a block away. It's the folks who live on Washington Street, it's, it's, uh, it's all day for them. <laughs> it's all day for them with crowds and tourists. So um, I just would want to make sure that people who live there have an opportunity to weigh in on um, on the hours. Um, I know there's obviously no outdoor seating because where would you have outdoor seating um, <laughs> uh, over there? But um, that's my only uh, question. Thanks, Ms. Quinn. And presumably maybe they had the opportunity to weigh in when this was first presented at the committee a couple of years ago. I mean, it's probably a little bit different now in that the, the traffic has increased quite a bit there in, in Dumbo. Um, and I, I don't know for, for certain what, what the status of the email communication from the board office was on this, but I take your yeah. word for it that you probably looked at the- email. I just double checked. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, any other questions or comments from the committee or, or, or from the community for this application? <clears throat> okay. Will you entertain a motion? Yes. I move to, I move to approve the application. Okay. Second. Second from Victor. So the motion is from Alejandro and the second is from Victor. Discussion on the motion. Any points of discussion from the committee? I'm, I'm ready to vote. Um, yep. I vote yep. In, in favor. In Mr. favor. Varela, Mr. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Andrews votes in favor. Mr. Varela, how do you vote? My first vote, I vote in favor. Okay. Um, Mr. Harrison, how do you vote? Yes. Um, Ms. Cobb, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. McKnight, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Ms. Anadu, how do you vote? Yes. And Mr. Newmark, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Did I miss anybody on the committee? I don't think so. Uh, unanimous and approved. Thank you very much. Um, good luck in your new establishment. And I think with like anybody from going into Dumbo, I, I hope that you take Ms. Quint's concerns to heart in terms of the, the traffic there. It certainly is a common, uh, comment that we've heard at our committee about Dumbo and um, new establishments that are, are, are starting up there and uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you. <laughs>
duly noted. I'm a resident too, so <laughs> uh, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, next up on the agenda, we've got the renewals. Um, and tonight's renewals consist of 181 Smith Street, Black Forest, 246 DeKalb Avenue, Mason May, DeKalb, 80 Lafayette Avenue, Mose Bar, oh, um, 419 Myrtle Avenue, Putnam's, 63 Flushing Avenue, uh, HNY, Hall number 205. We also have Hall number 208 at the same location. 1 DeKalb Avenue, Han Dynasty, and 148 Hoyt Street, AKA 136 Bergen Street, The Brooklyn Inn. Ms. Church, as per our normal <laughs> protocol, have you heard any complaints about any of these different establishments? Yes. Um, first, I want to say that 63 Flushing Avenue, those are the water ferries. So there, um, but 181 Smith Street, um, as you may remember in the initial application, there was um, uh, co concern about noise. Um, we have gotten complaints last year and this year regarding the, the layout and the impact on um, a resident in, in the building that, that sort of the yard sort of backs onto. Um, I believe the resident is on the line. Is he? I am. Um, as well as the uh, establishment owner. Okay. I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for joining, um, Mr. Eli, and thank you for joining Mr. Holler. Um, Ms. Church, were there any other, um, for putting aside the Black Forest Smith Street location, were there any concerns expressed about any of the other renewals or was this the only one? Thank you, Taya. <laughs> I was having a conversation by myself. Um, sorry about that. There's one that should be on there. That's um, Kimoto Rooftop Bar. We have received complaints in the past. That just came in um, on Friday. Is this related to the Aloft Hotel from last month? It's 228 Field. I always get the Aloft and the, the other one. Okay. Confused because they're next to each other. Okay. Um, so let's take that discussion out for a second. For the other ones that I mentioned, are there any concerns, other concerns about the rest of them? No, they're not. Okay. Um, with, re with regard to the... Uh, with regard to the 181 Smith Street location, um, I think uh, both of you guys have, have probably waited through quite a, a good amount of a meeting, so I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to speak. Um, um, Mr. Eli, I'll, I'll ask you to go first, and um, Mr. Hollier, I'll, I'll follow up with you from there, and um, we can try to see what we can do with regards to the the, uh, uh, the, the, this application. Um, Mr. Eli, just to first point out, the concern is, is about the outdoor backyard space at this location. That's okay. correct. Um, so the, the floor is yours. I would ask you to try to be as brief as possible. I don't adhere as strictly to the two minute thing as, as I, I, I probably should, but I want to um, but be cognizant of the fact we'd like you to keep your, your comments. Somewhere. Understood. Understood. I, I also, I'm, I'm out of town for a few days, um, but, you know, wanted to participate in this meeting and, and have, uh, you know, been waiting for this opportunity to talk about it. So I live on Warren Street. Um, the living room and bedroom windows of my apartment on Warren Street are less than 10 feet from the beer garden, um, a Black Forest restaurant. The beer garden occupies a, a parking form parking lot at 323 Warren Street, has a side entrance into the Smith Street facing restaurant. Um, and I've you know, shown up tonight to voice my 
absolute strongest opposition to renewing the outdoor liquor license for Black Forest. In uh, June of 2018, uh, Mr. Holler, the owner of Black Forest, made a presentation to the committee regarding his plans <clears throat> to open the beer garden in the parking lot at uh, 323 Warren, a parking lot that is surrounded on three sides by apartment buildings. In that presentation, Mr. Holler made several promises regarding noise mitigation efforts that Black Forest put in place in the beer garden. Uh, among other things that were promised in the presentation that was given to, the, to this committee, Mr. Holler promised a seating area of the beer garden wouldn't exceed 20 by 18, or what he described as about a third of the total size of the parking lot. They promised to install sound absorbing umbrellas over the seating areas. They promised to install sound absorbing hedge eight feet high and two inches thick along Warren Street to dampen the noise. They promised sound, sound absorbing blankets on the walls around the beer garden. They promised the beer garden would only have eight tables seating a maximum of 48 people. They promised that a third of the parking lot they made into a beer garden, the front third facing Warren Street, wouldn't be used for seating. And finally, they promised that Black Forest wouldn't have music or TV as outside. Today, as it stands, the seating area of the beer garden covers the overwhelming majority of the parking lot rather than just the one third of it that he promised. There are no sound absorbing umbrellas. There's no sound absorbing hedge along Warren Street. Beer Garden now seats more than 48 people, which were promised, and tables extend all the way to the front of the property on Warren Street, which puts tables less than 10 feet from my bedroom and my living room windows. On top of that, two weeks ago, Black Forest introduced music outside, which one night was playing so loudly, not only could it be heard almost a block away, but the, the bass from the music was pounding inside the apartments in the building where I live. In short, Black Forest hasn't maintained any of the noise mitigation efforts they promised the committee and the community three years ago. The resulting noise from the beer garden is a constant nuisance to the neighbors that live by, close by. And given Black Forest's track record of failing to maintain noise mitigation promised three years ago, I urge this committee not to renew their outdoor liquor license. I can't say this strongly enough. The noise the neighbors endure is untenable. After three years, we have suffered enough. Black, garden, Black Forest should not be allowed to continue to have a beer garden on that space. Their indoor space couldn't care less what they do inside. That space outdoors, too close to apartments. It is hard surfaces on three walls and pavement underneath and the noise from that beer garden reverberates along that street there. And having tables seated less than 10 feet from my bedroom window, despite me asking Mr. Holler repeatedly to move those tables, is really just, it's, it's untenable. We can't put up with it any longer. Okay, is that, uh, is that your complete statement, Mr. Eli? That's the statement, yes, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, was there anyone else who was here from the community to speak about this application? There is not. Okay. Um, Mr. Holler, um, and again, you know, similar with all the other discussions we've been having this meeting, I think with the, with the COVID protocols being lifted, it's been a popular season for folks to come in and, and, and open new establishments and, and folks are, um, from, the, from the community um, in, on the earlier applications have voiced their concerns. I just ask everybody to remain respectful, which you're doing right now and greatly appreciate it. Direct your comments to the chair. And um, Mr. Holler, I, I think from, from your perspective, um, what, it, what has been your feeling um, now, what's your feeling now about how things have been going in the backyard at your location, um, particularly in terms of the number of tables, the hours, the, 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 um, the level of music that's being played outdoors, and um, the mitigation efforts that you indicated you would put forth before the committee years ago, and 
um, the process that we went through at that time and um, any other points that you wanted to raise about this um, <clears throat> so that we, we can have a complete understanding of things from your perspective. Uh, yeah, thank you <clears throat> for giving me an opportunity to speak. I mean, um, it was a kind of last minute invitation, so I don't really have a polished presentation. Um, um, so where do I start? I mean, I, um, it's pretty upsetting for me to hear um, Mr. Eli's accusations um, where um, it sounds like we haven't done any, we haven't done any of the things that we promised. Um, so from my perspective, that is um, not true. Um, we did extensive, um, we did ex extensive um, mitigation efforts. And um, we did, ha we do have, I don't know if I need to go into the details of all the things they were supposedly not have done, but we have done them. Um, we have done the a hundred percent what we presented to you guys. Um, uh, when we went for the community board for the original application, we implemented those. Um, and we are sticking to the occupancy and the hours. Um, um, what, what are the current hours in the backyard and what's the approach to music in the backyard currently? Well, they, we do not have music in the backyard. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I hate to interrupt. But Mr. Eli, I'm sorry. Yes, you I, did. I, I, you Mr. Know Eli, you did. Mr. Eli, we have observed this process through this entire meeting. Whether you agree with Mr. Howler or not, I can't ask you or force you to agree with him or make sure that you both agree on anything. But what I will ensure is that we have a meeting where everybody directs their comments to the chair, abides by the same protocol, and we'll try to come up with the fairest determination based upon hearing things and recommendation that, that we can. Um, but I, I, I just wanna get Mr. Holler the opportunity to, to address the, the questions that, that I raised and, and are, in many respects are, you, are your concerns. Um, and uh, hopefully we can continue from that point. Um, Mr. Holler, did you wanna continue? Yeah, so I just, without getting into the details, but I do reject um, all of the accusations, including the music. Um, we, we are not, we don't have music in there. Um, I know that Warren Street is a fairly noisy street and there is loud music there sometimes. And I do not, um, and obviously I can't guarantee that, it, that the street is quiet, but uh, we do not have music in the backyard. We have music inside. Um, and I don't know what the, there is, there is, appears to be a specific occurrence that Mr. Eli was referencing about the music. Um, I would love to know the date of that and the time, um, but we do not have, we do not have music uh, in the space. Um, as far as the layout, I think what, um, where Mr. Eli, Eli is correct is that we did have a specific layout and that layout was leaving the, um, the front third of the of the backyard empty, and that's actually what you see in the picture right now. Um, and that was actually, you know, a design that was based on the community input. And um, Mr. Ile was very vocal in the beginning, and, and as a result of his concerns, we actually kept that area empty. It was it was actually um, we didn't use it for the restaurant. Um, <clears throat> When, um, when, COVID, um, when COVID hit and we were able to reopen outdoor, outdoor only, we, were, um, we needed to space out the tables. And I, was, um, I did put a table in that area where there was previously no table. Um, I did um, have a conversation with Mr. Eli about that. And he reached out to me, he was upset about it. Um, I told him that it is an extremely difficult situation for um, restaurants at the moment. And, and, I, and I asked him to let me have the table back there and, and that I would um, uh, add that I had some ideas for additional noise mitigation that I would uh, put in place if we survive you know, the winter and we're still there in the spring of 2021. Um, he, he did not, he did not, um, <clears throat> We didn't change his mind. So I couldn't convince him. He said, this table has to be gone. Um, I didn't continue the conversation. I did leave the table there. 
um, I was, um, you know, in a survival mode. And but then I heard from the community board um, that Mr. Eli actually reached out to the community board, and the community board had asked me to remove the table, which then I did. Um, I did. I did try to make my case that um, that we should get some um, leeway given the COVID situation, but the community board was. Um, you know, wanted me to remove the table, so I did. Um, and what we have now is what you see in this picture, where there is, you know, this area in the back is almost empty. There's one two top sitting there. And if you look at the, um, the hedge on the left side, that is actually the direction that Mr. Ellis' um, windows are on the ground floor of that building facing Warren, Warren Street. So there used to be a fairly large table directly at the gate. Um, where there's now plants. Um, and I do understand that that is a direct line of sound from this table to his window. And um, I understand that that is actually, um, you know, probably um, worse than what it was before. Uh, and therefore, <clears throat> in this current layout, we actually did put the hedge um, between um, his apartment windows and we only, we're only putting a two-top table there, which you see right there in the middle. And that two-top table is also removed very far from the back of the lot. Um, we put plants there to create an, an additional space, the, the plants at the, at the gate. And the two-top is actually kind of just tucked in the, um, the building that um, Mr. Eli lives in so that we do not have a direct line of sound. Um, the other thing we did, and that is also a change, and that's also brought brought um, by COVID, is that we um, we put in a a roof over most of the seating area. We actually consolidated most of the seating area into the back area as far away as possible from Mr. Eli's window. Um, and there is actually a plexiglass cover. We did. We used to have umbrellas, just like we promised. Um, now we've replaced it with something that's better than umbrellas, which is the uh, a plexiglass roof. Um, and there's even a plexiglass wall facing the, fan, facing the Warren Street side, so that it actually reduces the amount of sun that's traveling outwards, again, affecting Mr. Eli. Um, so I, um, I also want to note that, um, and I'm sure the community board remembers the, um, the amount of opposition that we've got when we started uh, in the first meeting, and there was really strong opposition from neighbors all around. and um, I'm very happy and I'm very proud that there is um, that many of these people that have been opponents are regulars now. Um, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I could not convince um, Mr. Eli to become a regular um, or to appease his concern. And, um, you know, he stopped reaching out to me directly and that's okay. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I wanna know what I should do um, to make him happy, I, I feel personally that um, Mr. Eli has unreasonable um, expectations as to what can be done on this lot and how. Um, and I kind of get upset when I hear accusations that are unfounded. Um, I'm always open to a constructive dialogue, and I, you know, I want to resolve it. And you know, it would be a huge success for me if if what we do is something that he will accept. Um, based on the history of the last three years and the conversations, I'm not sure what it is other than close down your backyard, stop operating altogether. That is not an option for me. Um, okay. Thank you. thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Howard. Um, I'm gonna ask if any other members of the committee have any uh, comments that they wanna make at this time um, or questions for Mr. Howler. I have one question for Mr. Eli, or just uh, that he might be able to answer. Did you notice a change? Because it seems based on what Mr. Holler described that there were changes post COVID or because of COVID. Did you notice a change in sound or how the sound affected you between before COVID and after? I guess what I'm getting at is, could this be a sort of a temporary problem for you if things go back to the way they were before COVID. So thank you for asking, Alejandro. Um, the, in the photograph that you were looking at, the, the red building is, is the building where I live, the apartment where I, where I am. 
Um, post uh, pre-COVID, when tables were behind that wall, it was significantly less loud than it is now. And it, it's, but it's always been loud, but significantly less loud than it is now. And I've reached out to Mr. Holler repeatedly um, over, you know, between June and, and end of October last year, we probably corresponded by email, you know, 10 plus times, I would guess, give or take. And each time Mr. Holler's response, when I would say like, just you know, move those tables back, like don't seat tables right by my window. His answer was always, well, let's just wait and see what happens, right? And, and that's my concern here, right? Is that, you know, the, the sound of, if you look at this, this other picture that we have here, right? Sound absorbing umbrellas did absorb some level of sound. What he has now is just created more hard surfaces and the sound just continues to bounce and is louder, right? The, so it, it has gotten worse over time. And despite Mr. Holler saying that, you know, I'm just making accusations that are sort of wild and unfounded, based on what he promised the committee three years ago and what the pictures show now, they're just not the same. Right? It is louder than it has ever been and it's unacceptable. And my efforts to, you know, to work with him or to, to ask him to move things have been rejected repeatedly. Any other questions from the committee? Okay. Um, Ms. Church, have we had any other members of the com community besides Mr. Eli raise any concerns about this application? Not since after the opening, no. Um, Mr. Eli, I think it's fair to ask, what do, what do you make of that? Do you, do, you make the, do you feel like there are a significant number of people that are concerned about this and, and why would they not be coming forward? I can't, I can't answer why people wouldn't come forward, but yes, I know that people who live in my building who endure the noise are unhappy about it. I know that, you know, others who are, you know, who I know in the community um, through, you know, neighborhood blog, right, have also expressed concerns about it. I also know that there was no indication anywhere around Black Forest that, that this meeting tonight was even occurring. So, there was no posting saying that the license is up for renewal anywhere. And the only reason I found out about it is because I subscribed to the, the Community Wars newsletter. So I read about it. So, you know, why aren't people here? I guess people didn't know tonight was occurring, for one. But I don't know why else people would choose not to apply, not to, to speak up. Right, and I don't expect you to do that, but I, I do want to make sure that you're aware of that because that's the that, that's that's part of the consideration that we have to think about. Um, you know, not the only consideration, but part of the consideration. Um, can we, excuse me. Can we just clarify that there is no requirement for for a renewal sign to be posted? Thank you, Miss Church. I was going to mention that. I think this that's, is... that's a fair point as well, too. Um, but I think from this point, um, let's take a motion on the other renewal applications and then let's specifically consider this set. Move to approve. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the other applications. Okay. So just to be 100% precise, this is decal Mason May, Mose Bar, Putnam's, hull number 205, number 208. Approved. Han Dynasty and Brooklyn Inn. Uh, we, we have a, a motion from uh, Mr. Harrison. And who is the second? Should I? Me. Victor. Victor gets the second. Okay. Any discussion? Um, and I vote in favor. Um, Kasua, how do you vote? Yeah. Uh, John, how do you vote? Sorry, Mr. Chair, yes. Okay. Mr. Varela, how do you vote? In, in favor. Uh, Mr. Andrews, how do you vote? 
Ms. McKnight, how do you vote? In favor. Yes. Uh, Mr. Newmark? In favor. Um, okay. And if I didn't say so already, I vote in favor. So the other applications are approved. Um, we'll handle the Aloft in a bit. Um, so I'm not gonna make a motion on that at this point, but can I get a motion on Mr. Holler's uh, application 181 Smith Street? Second. Well, I got, we, got, we gotta have a motion before we have a second, Mr. Andrews. <laughs> Victor is the permanent seconder. <laughs> well, I'll make a motion that we approve the application, um, but remain open for the point of discussion. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. And this is a tough one. It, discussion. Sorry, yeah, Alejandro, this is, I mean, I completely empathize with, with Mr. Eli and, and having a noisy neighbor and not being able to sleep and all that stuff that comes with having noise. On the other hand, after all these years of doing this, there have been so few uh, business owners who have been as amenable and as accommodating as, mis, as to Mr., um, Mr. Holler has. And I don't, that's, that's not nothing. Um, that doesn't help Mr. Eli sleep at night, but it is, it, it is the case. And it feels as if Mr. Holler has done a lot to, to make that space, you know, sort of uh, not a nuisance to his neighbors. And it seems that of the neighbors, Mr. Eli is the most impacted. And that has certainly something to do with the fact that he is the closest to that yard. And um, yeah, I, I'm just sort of, saying these things, I don't have a solution for this. I, I sort of feel for both parties on, on this case and keeps being thrown into the chat is uh, the city's uh, mediation service. Um, and I don't know how in depth that gets or if that helps people deal with this sort of thing and, and provide next steps. But uh, there, was a, there was a time after this place opened or when the yard opened that Mr. Eli was more satisfied with the noise level. And so I guess the obvious response is, can we get back to that point at least? And would that be sufficient? Um, but I don't feel, uh, uh, sure enough to start recommending noise mitigation options because I don't know enough about that space and, and what's already been done and how prohibitive the costs are to undo or redo things. And so uh, I guess I am just curious if there is a, there is a place where Mr. Eli was con, you know, sort of content enough with the mitigation and is that place reachable again? Okay, that's a, I mean, it's a thought, but you know, I, I'll, I'll say this about the point of mediation, which I've, I've had some experience with in my, in my, my, my former life as a prosecutor. Um, the one thing that is required for mediation is that we have to get both parties involved and agreeable to it if that's, if that's a potential option. Just from a sense, Jack, you know, from the beginning, um, Mr. Hollier, would you be agreeable to, per per to participate in some kind of mediation with um, Mr. Eli? Um, is that I, I don't know is that a is that a legal no problem, can, no, no, no this is not a this is, talk. I just want to I just want to this is not going to be a condition of the of the motion and, but I, I but I, I just wanted to get your your honest feeling about that I would I would I would love nothing more than um, Mr. Eli to be happy with what we're doing I really I really would and I've said this before in this committee is that if you're in the restaurant you are in the business of pleasing people and you know annoying people is not what you're why you actually in this business and as i said i am extremely proud and i think we've worked very hard that that there's only one neighbor who is not happy with what we're doing and um i would love it to be all all neighbors happy so i'm definitely willing to 
and I have done this um, with Ms. Ely. I mean, we've we've met several times, we've emailed numerous times, and it's always been um, obviously a strong disagreement, but always respectful, and I appreciate that. And so I'm, you know, I maybe we should just get back to that, and you know, sit down and meet in the space. And you know, I mean, I can tell you there's some thoughts that I have about how it was and how it is. Um, um, one thing that you know I have to tell you guys is that. We, the restaurant wasn't doing very well in the first two years, including the backyard. And that may be one of the reasons why there wasn't that much noise. Um, and it's more popular and it's more successful now. And I, you know, it is, it is a sustainable business now. Uh, thank God that wasn't always the case. Um, and um, so the fact that it is, you know, louder now could be just a result of that. Um, the I have, I've got, I, I went pretty deep into acoustic treatment of exterior spaces as part of this whole process. I've hired an acoustic consultant. So I, I, I don't think that what we've done now is worse than what we've done before. Um, and particularly, you know, we have, we have really designed these things with Mr. Ely in mind and at the expense, I would say, of some of the other neighbors, you know, by, by putting everybody as far away from him as possible you know, they're obviously closer to somebody else. And um, I also want to clarify that Mr. Ely is not the most affected neighbor at all. The most affected neighbors are the ones who are living on the first floor on this on Smith Street facing the backyard. Well, those are and, and we're I, not- I, I think you and I can agree on who's the most affected neighbor. But I think the reason Mr. Ely is here today is that he's the neighbor who, who certainly cares about this the most. and. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And certainly if I were in his shoes, I would feel like I'm the most effective neighbor. But I, I take your point as to where you're going. And I wanna try to get you know, this more constructively um, understood so that we can, we can try to come to uh, some kind of a, a resolution here this evening um, that is somewhat incorporating of the the, the concerns that are being addressed as well as your, your position as well too. I, I heard from you some degree of being willing to sit down and work together, not necessarily mediation, but some degree of working together with uh, Mr. Ely again in the future. Mr. Ely, I, I wanna ask you like, do you feel like things are just at an impasse between you and Mr. Hollier or do you feel like there's, there's some benefit from sitting down and speaking with him? whether via mediation or through some other method in the future? So I've spoken face to face with Mr. Holler a few times um, and the response is always, essentially I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm sorry you're not happy about it. And that coupled with the fact that the noise media mitigation efforts that um, were in place and that this, this committee had approved originally have all been taken down now I, I honestly don't have a lot of trust that anything that there would be a result that would be lasting. Right? Mr. Holler has not kept his word regarding the initial noise mitigation he promised to this committee three years ago. It was some of it was up for a while, but it's all gone now. So I, I'm not sure why I would why I'm being asked to believe that that we could sit down and suddenly he would agree to something that would last more than a season going forward. Okay. So I think then to, to say, based on your experience, would it be fair to say you don't feel like sitting down further and discussing things would be a fruitful exercise for, for, for yourself? If he's unwilling to make any accommodation beyond what he thinks is appropriate, then no, it wouldn't be fruitful. And so far he's only done what he's wanted to do. Okay. Um, Mr. Hollier, one other thing I wanted to mention is, I, I wanted to just get, clear is from your perspective, um, what steps are have been taken specifically to the extent you may have said it previously, I, I just want to make sure I understand, to ensure that there is, are tables not located near Mr. Eli's residence and to make sure that certain parts of the backyard are clear and free of noise. Um, the um... Well, I think I think um, the area that most affects him is the is all the way back by the sidewalk, and that area was um, completely free in the original proposal. And 
as you can see in the picture right now, there's one two top that is, you know, sort of encroaching on that area. Um, so I think, and we did like, I, I do, like I said, we had a larger table there last summer and we removed it um, um, when the community board asked me to do it. <clears throat> so I feel we are responsive and um, I mean, I mean, I really appreciate all you guys, you know, sticking sticking around and helping us through this. I really appreciate. It. I know how late it is, and um, I, I'm I'm happy that I'm, I'm here, and I'm happy that Mr. Eli is here. So, I mean, I can tell you. I mean, I mean, I I have ideas. Okay, I have ideas of how to make it better. Um, I think we've done a lot, and it's very unfortunate that Mr. Eli does not recognize the effort. Um, and you know, I have I have ideas of what what I can do more, but because he hasn't appreciated or acknowledged the fact that we have done a lot, um, makes me somewhat hopeless that the additional potential expenses for additional measures are going to be equally rejected. So that's kind of my dilemma. I can say, hey, um, you know, I can tell you, for example, for my acoustic research. One thing I think would help is if, like the picture that you're seeing right now on the screen, there's this big hedge on the left side, right? Um, that was actually a, a sound mitigation strategy, but it is not as effective as a solid piece of material. So if we were to, there are these kind of, you know, very specific kind of um, sound blankets that are very heavy that block sound and reduce reverberation, if we were to hang those on the fence behind the hedge, we would essentially create the equivalent of a brick wall. I mean, there it's it's called mass loaded vinyl. It's very heavy material that's kind of inside of a of a weatherproof blanket, and it's pretty heavy. But we have the we have the um, we have the fence there. We could hang those panels. You can velcro them together so they they create a continuous um, area. And I would, you know, propose that we could actually hang those panels there behind the head, behind the hedge. And I think that would actually help a lot. Because, you know, vegetation helps some, but um, a solid kind of, you know, fabric that is specifically designed to block sound helps more. Um, okay. What about the tables that are in that back portion of the yard? Um, are, I, I know that you moved some tables away from Mr. Eli's residence, but it, are there still tables that are back there in that back portion of the yard from your opinion, Mr. Hollier? Well, there's one two top there that is um, just on the edge of the, of, of the building. So, you know, there is no direct line of sight to his window. If we were to move that table over, you know, four feet, then it would be direct line of sight. And that's what, what we had. Yeah, this table, exactly. How much do we need that two top from your well, perspective? You, you will, um, you'll be surprised how popular that is because when it gets warmer, people want to kind of sit um, spaced out and, um, but you know, it's a fair question. You know, we could, we could, um, you know, if it, if it solves the issues, I'm happy to take that, remove that table. Brendan? Frankly, I don't think anything's gonna solve the issue, but no. I, but Mr. Varela, do you wanna, do you wanna uh, make your comment? I'm happy to hear from you as well. I do, it's a bit more procedural, Brendan. I apologize, I just, um, I have to go and I'm curious about how much you need my vote for quorum. And, uh, and, and although I, I quite, you know, I, I'm all for mediation and I'm really grateful that, you know, we're making this space for this. It's been a long time to focus on this one issue and it's, I have not had dinner. Sorry, that, is, but I, I'm just saying that I have to go. That, that's um, that's true. Look, I mean, honestly, th this is what this is what we do, and I appreciate your point. I mean, I see a willingness who, who, still, even though Mr. Eli said that he didn't trust the intention. I heard, you know, my put my social work hat on, and I feel like I heard still some openness there. There's a possibility, and I hear Mr. Holler saying that there's some possibilities. Um, so I don't I don't think this is this is a lost cause, but um, but, I, but getting there to that agreement might take much longer than, than, than I have capacity for today. Okay. I, may I make one, more, one last comment? Mr. Can Eli, I yes, you can make one last comment. If you last try, to, try to keep it brief, please. But I will. Yeah. So I, I'd like to, to just direct your attention to something Mr. Holler said twice. 
and that is that he had a larger table up front by my apartment and he removed it when the committee requested. I'd like it noted, I requested that he do that first before I came to the community board. I asked him to move that table. He refused. And then I went to the community board and the, then he said, yeah, okay, he moved it because the community board asked him. So I think that that's just, that's sort of what we have working, right? He doesn't, but if I ask, it doesn't matter. The community board asks, he'll think okay. about it and then make, make changes. Okay. Mr. Thank Chair. you. I appreciate I, everyone's time tonight. I know it's late. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Harrison, this will be our last comment before we, we take a motion vote. But who, who made the motion here? Was that you, Mr. Harrison? We didn't make a motion on this. You have separated this out and we've been discussing it for an hour. No, oh, Brandon made a motion in the end. And I made a motion. Second. Oh, good. I, I, get to, I get to amend my own motion. What was your motion? My motion was to approve the application and then have a further discussion. And we're have, we've had that further discussion. Did you have a point you wanted to make before we-, we, we, uh, uh, we The only on? point I wanted to make is that we should vote, Mr. Chair, thank you. Okay. I think this has been um, an adequate discussion. Okay. So I'm gonna amend my motion. And my motion is that we approve the application with the outdoor um, with the outdoor service with the conditions that Mr. Heller um, construct additional sound mitigating measures in the backyard to address Mr. Ely's concern um, and to um, remove the, the table in the rear of the, of the backyard. Um, I don't think I, I I don't know if you I don't think you have to be Mr. Hollier, but is that are are you, would you be on board with making those changes? I was hoping that I could do either or, but um, I will um, abide by what you guys um, decide. Okay, well, it's just a motion. People could vote it down or have other comments, but um, I, I, I think uh, um, from, I would also make as a condition of any uh, decision to approve the renewal that you, Mr. Hollier, uh, continue to express um, a um, degree of, and indeed complete uh, willingness to listen to Mr. Eli to the, to the extent that he wants to communicate with you about his concerns, as well as to any other resident who wants to do the same. Um, I'm not going to say that you haven't done that. I'm not going to say that you, that you necessarily have done that, because obviously you both are saying that, you know, you're, you're, you're doing it, you're not doing it, and um, I, I, I don't want to uh, necessarily imply that I, that I, have a complete belief in, in either one of you respectively to that point. Um, but from that point, does anyone on the committee have any further uh, comments on my uh, amended motion? Victor, do you second it? Great, I, I, I do. I think um, Mr. Holler already stated that he's willing to do either or if he's try one of them and see if it works and maybe that will resolve it but if it sounds like he's put a lot of financial costs into this and to just keep asking him to do more and more and it still doesn't work i think he we should just go with one he mentioned that he's going to put maybe the blanket that should help and if he does that um i think it's important to allow someone to um earn some profits from their business if those two if that table helps I don't think we need to impose both. Okay. Any other members of the committee have any thoughts? Mr. Newmark. I agree with what uh, Ms. McKnight said completely. Okay. Any other thoughts from the committee? I don't think we heard from Andrew. Uh, Victor, if he, if he agrees to your amendments, your motion. He did, John. They were seconded, so I think we're I, I, I think we're okay. Um, I'm going to go back on my my motion once again, 
in which case mm -hmm. anybody can second it again. And I, I accept what Nicole and uh, Barry have suggested, which is to, to make it an either or, you know, either Mr. Hollier creates the additional sound mitigation or he removes the table from the backyard. So from that, from that back portion of the yard. And I think we know which table it was. It was the one in that, that picture that was in the, the backyard in the back part of the yard, the two top. Um, and I don't, I, I don't imagine this is going to be a perfect solution that will make everybody happy. Um, but I, I, it will be something that would be codified in our decision and a recommendation to the state liquor authority regarding renewal of the application. So that's my motion. Um, can I get one, one more second? Second, I second it. Uh, Ms. Cobb seconds it. Um, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor are, I, I'm gonna, I'll call everybody out. I vote in favor. Ms. Cobb, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Harrison, how do you vote? No. Uh, Ms. McKnight, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Newmark, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Varela, how do you vote? In favor. Okay. And Mr. Andrews, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much. And um, I, I really do hope that you all continue to have a dialogue. Um, and regardless of how fruitful you each might feel it might be, um, it's, it's the situation between any two neighbors who don't get along is, uh, is, a, is a challenge that is very difficult to deal with um, sometimes, most often because if you're one of those two neighbors, you often feel that you are so much the one who's in the right. Um, I, I really wish you guys both the best of luck. And I, I thank you for coming to our committee with your concerns. I, I hope that the, this will work out for both of you. And if it doesn't, then we're certainly here to hear, continue to hear your concerns in the future and follow up from there. Thank you very much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. All right, on the A-loft, um, Ms. Church has, has advised me that there's been some complaints about the A-loft and um, the A-loft is a hotel on Duffield Street and was up for renewal last time. Based upon the nature of the complaints, I think we need to ask the A-loft to come here and address them. But Ms. Church, have we done that? No, so, so the application was received on Friday, which means it's officially on the agenda for the next meeting, um, which will be the executive committee meeting. So, okay. you know, I don't know how we want to handle that. Well, I think, will the, will the applicant be coming to the executive committee meeting or are they going to be invited? Um, I, if that's a possibility, I mean, we, we have to have if we're going to deal with this in a, in a way that is responsible, we have to have a way to adequately address concerns. And are there community members we need to invite as well too? Yes, because we got complaints from the community. I mean, there's nothing, there's been nothing over the last year because, well, there were no events over the last year. But prior to that, we were getting um, complaints. Okay. So if that's the case, I, I think we need to have a meeting where the, the, both the ALOFT and the community are invited to. If that's the executive, then that's fine. If that's some meeting over the summer, then that's fine. If that's next, next September, if that's September's meeting, then that's fine. Um, but I don't know how we're going to make an assessment of any complaints if we don't have the community members here and we don't have the hotel here. Well, we can, we can, uh, we can look to probably discussing it um, early in the summer 
Um, just that June is packed for the, for the staff with meetings right now. And th that, that's all I can suggest. Okay. I mean, that, because that item was received on Friday, so there was no way for us to set something up. What was what was received on on Friday? Was, was the, the notice? The um, renewal notice was received on Friday. Okay. Does it have a shelf life, Caroline? Yes, it does. What What's the end date that we have to weigh in on? The community board has 30 days on every application. And especially with renewals, renewals are almost turnkey. I think we should invite them to the executive. Uh, that's easy yeah, for me to punt. July will be too late. Right, I agree. Okay. Um, we can probably make some sort of statement um, because the SLA will not, not renew their license because someone complained the noise. So, you know, we can say we object to the renewal, but we're not going to, the SLA is not going to not renew this license because we say the neighbors complained the noise. Um, so we could, say something, I believe, and hold a meeting um, when it's possible to do so. Well, what can we say? We don't have any of the neighbors here and- We uh, have passed emails. Right, but no one on the committee's had the time to review these emails. I, I well, don't- they're, they're older, they're, they're older, older communications. Okay. Like I said, this only came in to us on, on Friday, so. Okay. Well, if it came in on Friday, today's June 2nd, and we, I, I fail to understand why we can't figure this out at the executive committee meeting. I, I really don't understand that. We can, but you know, I have to get approval for what goes on the executive committee agenda, so. Okay. Um, but how can we in good conscience make any recommendation if we don't have community members or concerns that are in any detail expressed before us? I mean, I, I would recommend that we, I don't see how I can vote on something if I don't have the information. Exactly. Well, it's going to be on the, on the executive committee agenda um, and we will speak um, internally about having the applicant attend. Okay. Okay. I, I, I think that that's the most reasonable approach to things. And I would encourage the community, the committee members to try to attend this meeting if you can, um, just because we're the most knowledgeable about liquor licenses because we hear this every month and, and it will be helpful to, to have your perspective there. So that should close out the, the renewals. It's 10.09 and we don't have time to discuss district needs. We have to find a way to discuss this offline in between. Um, I know that the office has put some work into this. We have some great ideas from the past. Um, added something today. Might, might I suggest that persons, that, that members add things to it. And so um, we meet on the 1st of September. Um, it's a little late to begin like the research on it, but uh, if, if the information is in on, on the spreadsheet, on September 1st, we're just looking at prioritizing. We can have a discussion then. Okay. Well, we gotta get all the information in. So, can, we set a, can we set a committee deadline, an internal deadline for get, for populating that spreadsheet? Like if everyone adds one item and we just decide to do it by, I, I fear that we'll be, we'll reach September 1st or the week before and we'll be scrambling to add information and then we can't research it. But if it's all in there, let's say by the end of this month or even by the end of this week, 
because we've been talking about this for many months and we've brainstormed a lot of things, at least if some version of, of an item is added to the spreadsheet, we'll have time to you know, sort of shape it up. Well, we could say we're gonna all have our comments in for August 1st and that'll be great. But I think we need to take responsibility to actually do it. And um, I can take some of that responsibility to make sure that we get that done. I, I have some ideas which I can talk to Carol Ann about offline in that regard. And, and hopefully we can come up with a, a process that will we'll do that. Yeah, I, I can see from the latest version of the spreadsheet that there have been several items added. I, had se I added several, Alejandro said he added one. There was another one in there before I even added any. So there are five listed at this point, not necessarily all need to remain there, but there are five listed. And if everybody lists one or two, we'll have a bunch to go through. It doesn't take that long to do it, truly, folks. So Brandon, I would you know, humbly suggest that you remind everybody in an email as a follow-up uh, and please include the link again to the spreadsheet, I would suggest. Um, and, uh, you know. Okay. The, the, and, those oh. who respond will respond. You know, um, even if you can't find the link, just go to the drive. It's in the drive at all times. That's where it lives. Whatever. All that information should just has to be shared again with everybody. People forget. People have other things that they get focused on, you know. So you just remind them of those options to get to it. Okay. I, I do, but... Well, we... Look, we all have our thoughts about this, and I think we're going to find a way to get this done. I will send out the email. Um, we do have the drive. Um, you know, we'll find a way to make this work. And I have some other ideas too. So I think we can talk about our strategy for this offline, Carol Ann. Um, approval of minutes from May 5th, 2021. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay, the motion is from Alejandro. The second is from Barry. Discussion on the motion. I just wanna note, I submitted some corrections to the, the secretary in the office. Um, John, you had a point of discussion? Yeah, I wasn't absent. It passed me as absent. Okay, so you abstain, um, but- oh, No, no, you misunderstand. It has me as absent, but I was Okay, not so let it be known. We need to correct it so that John is not marked absent. John is marked present. You were present. At that? It shows during the it shows during the discussion when John uh, came in. Exactly. Oh. So and when I and when absent. I introduced motions. Okay. So noting John as being present, um, I, I support this. John, do you support it? Yes. Barry, do you support it? Alejandro? Yes, yes, yes. Um, Victor? Uh, Akaswa? Thank you. Miss McKnight? Okay, we definitely have consensus that would support that. Okay, cool. Um, In favor. Thank you, Victor. Uh, chairperson's report. I'm gonna keep it brief, just noting that we had a very successful meeting with the Yekka committee last month. Um, thank you to everyone who attended that. Um, really appreciated it. I think it's really successful and looking forward to the project that we're working on there. Um, we're also planning to have a meeting with um, some energy providers in, uh, in September, which I hope you look forward to also on the issue of sustainability, power grid, uh, what, how to, how to deal with the super storm. You know, I, I feel like we need to have another meeting on the environment because we haven't really done that as much as I wanted this year. And hopefully we can get that underway next year. A lot of other things I like to report on, but um, it's been a great year working with all of you guys on the committee. I'm looking forward to another great year. And, and that's my report. Thanks for your leadership, Brandon. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for your leadership, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, other business? Anybody have any other business to raise? At the end of, uh, after the last meeting, we talked about adding a bunch of questions to the questionnaire. I drafted about eight or nine items. I guess it's something we can either mail around and just talk about online or we can punt it to September. No biggie. Just want to throw out there so we don't forget. Can you just share it via email? We can talk about it offline. I want to make I sure we honor 
what the board office wants from this and and also the I appreciate your creativity and input as always Alejandro. Okay. No other business any any community members left for community forum. Nope. <laughs> we, we blew through Those them. Those would be some hardy souls. Yes, that's right. That's right. You're that's lucky right. you have some committee members remaining. I am. I am very lucky. Right. Thank yeah, you. And, so, and, and my apologies if I was curt before about wanting to end. I didn't mean to be rude if I was. No, I you, look, it's no a, you just started it's eating. It's a fair point. I mean, it's, honestly, it's, it's. I blame it on my blood sugar. I blame it on the blood sugar. I'm hungry. I'll be lucky if I can get Chinese food at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We shouldn't have asked all those places to close so early. Um, that's right. I mm -hmm. hope you guys have a great evening. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Don't move. I'm a Second. Happy summer. Okay. Be well, everybody. Don't get to move. Yep. Be well, everybody. All right. Everybody Aye. in favor? Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. All right. Aye. All right. Wonderful.